So welcome back to the Est Coffee Hour. We are really excited to have on Zach King today. He's got 66 million followers on TikTok. Being the fifth most followed person on the entire platform. And he's got 12 million subscribers on YouTube. He's been on TV shows, movies. You've probably seen him online. And he's about to reveal how much money he makes. Are you excited? I am beyond excited. Are you? Yeah, I, I am. But did you subscribe? I subscribe so hard. Hey everybody, I'm Zach King. Welcome back to the Ice Coffee Hour. And guess what? This podcast has made up to this date $72,000. Ooh! You that. I mean, That's under guessing. Wow, you under guessed by I under guess. Yeah. By oh, okay. Yeah. Let's let's re guess. Um <laughs> then if it's an under guess, then probably 265. Oh, wow, now you really win. really so over guess there. Now <laughs> yeah. we're honing in. It's a great yeah. between 180. Oh, 130. 123. That's yeah. great. Yeah, $123,000. Yeah. I mean, you guys know this, but that's some people's whole year income. Yeah, no, and it's you've been... done it in about a year and a half, so that's pretty impressive. Yes, we are. Very but fortunate. I know for you guys, it probably feels small. Not for right? me. Wow. No, <laughs> not for me. Okay. Yeah, it's for, for am, I, are, am yeah. I allowed to ask this? But what's yeah. the split on the chin? Like, have we ever? Wow, we've we've wait, never we disclosed this that? publically. You know how about the, that's going to be exposed? <laughs> should we should we just start it off with a banger? Should, should we, we disclose that? I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Yeah, you're okay with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. So, I've always wondered. I've never heard you talk. Yeah, about Yeah, sure. Wow, this is the first time yeah. we've ever. And this said is that. across the board between sponsors and ad revenue. Everything that the this je channel generates and all the expenses yeah. are split with this number. So I get ninety nine percent jackets two percent yeah wait 99 and then two percent yeah how does that isn't 98 no uh yeah, it okay. started out i think i had like in the beginning what 15 percent i think it was 20 no it was 15 and then we moved it up to 20 because you saw how much work i was doing with each episode providing yeah. the outline and everything yeah and then when i dropped out of college oh i, I get my outline. that was it way. yeah where's my outline oh your outline yeah i don't think you did it for this oh, episode. uh yeah yeah we don't do that okay. anymore I have to cut his commission back. <laughs> <laughs> so I got lazy. We we had it at okay. So it started at twenty. Fifteen. 15 it started at fifteen. Those first few episodes were just Jack and I talking, and Jack yeah. would come out with a list of questions to ask me, and it was just him and I for the first like two or three. Yep. Uh, Each episode yeah. was probably taking me at that point like twelve to fourteen hours. Okay. Good between good the pre-planning, which yeah. would be like the pre-planning would be like three to four hours, just literally just researching like fun money quizzes and yeah. stuff like that topics we can discuss. <laughs> oh uh, and then also like recording was an hour and a half or so. And then editing, it took me so yeah. long. Editing a so. podcast. It was insane. Yeah. So probably like 12 to 14 hours. And he saw how much work I was putting in. So yeah. he's like, I'll bump you 5%. So I was making an extra <laughs> like 70 bucks a month. Pretty cool. good. So it's everything the channel brings in whether it's commission thing or AdSense. Yeah. At the time it was really it just was AdSense 20. and we had no expectation. This was just Jack being like, hey, if we spend an hour a week, all you gotta do is just show up yep. and I'll set I'll up take the care cameras. Of everything. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, for an hour a week, we'll do this, we'll get out a podcast. And then it, and then it started growing a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when I dropped out of college, I requested a larger portion of the second channel, which I, I do a lot of work on that. Uh, and Graham, won, he didn't want to give me that larger portion. The so we second decided channel to, is the Graham Stefan Graham show. Graham Stefan yeah. show, yeah. Uh -huh. So we decided to roll that into the iced coffee hour. So he's like, I'll give you a huge portion of the iced coffee hour <laughs> and a smaller portion of the little second channel. Know. So, little did I know. Little did he know. So back <laughs> then, <laughs> the, 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 this podcast was making nothing. It's I mean, probably like 700 bucks a month. Maybe that, but yeah. Jack was spending like 20 hours a week, just like just through miscellaneous stuff. Yeah. I was spending probably about two hours a week between titles and thumbnails. Uh, it was taking a long time. So yeah. that was uh, basically a part-time job for both of us. And uh, yeah, so I ended up giving Jack, you want to say it? 45%. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, Congrats. I left out. That's, Thank and you. That's Thank very, you. that's yeah. generous. And then as soon as he gave me 45%, the oh, channel gosh. exploded. Oh, it was so, dude. it was And amazing. I gave him 45% yeah. thinking, oh, you know, it's, and I calculated how much money I thought the podcast would make. And I was like, okay, well, this is compensating Jack for his time. Yeah. And then within like a few months after that, we started Just getting Just loaded it up with sponsors. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sponsors. <laughs> it really, really took So guests. you're going after the sponsors yourself. Uh, I was back in the day, but now we have like a few agents. Oh, I was organizing all the sponsors. I yeah. still do. Yeah. But well, Alex. Does yeah. Even now, when you have agents, you're still man like checking all the bullet yeah, points absolutely. and you're reading the contracts and yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to be the, you know, I agents we found over the years are awesome when they get to know your brand. You know, I'm rep by CAA and we, and we do brand deals directly to mm -hmm. with, with brands, but it's, that's not, you're still, even if it's going through an agency or another agent, you're checking everything right, to right. triple check. Cause it's on you. Like if something else got in there, exactly. You have to say or whatever. Yeah. It's important, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, back. That's I it. mean, now I, I would probably have negotiated stronger. But, hey, uh, but, man, but he's you know what? Yeah. Yeah. He game, didn't even want to continue it. doing the podcast back in the day. Yeah, yeah. there was there was a point for me where I where was he so literally busy. wanted to quit. Yeah, yeah. There was, I was so busy, 
And this for me was like, oh, I don't have time to do a podcast. I just, I can't do it. Yeah. I don't have the time. And Jack was like, no, we got to do it. And I was like, well, we had done like seven episodes so far. I didn't want to miss an episode. So it was just wanting to continue that because I didn't want to like do seven and stop. Nice. So yeah, I, I, I think it's super important that people have skin in the game. They're excited and they have ownership over it. Yes. And now so, you can just yeah. run it. I mean, yeah, you're exactly. basically plugging and playing into this, right? At this point? No. Titles you organize least, yeah. guess a lot. Yeah. And then you do title thumbnail. The yeah. guess makes sense because, like, I met you, uh, you know, in L.A. recently. Yeah. It's like, that happens, right? You just meet people. Exactly. And, yeah. and it's like, it makes sense for you to kind of book it. It doesn't take too much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. That's so awesome. Those for us are good networking opportunities because it's different when you're, like, DMing people back and forth. And it's, it's not the same as, like, getting to meet somebody in person. Totally. Especially someone if you've been watching them for, like, two, three years and you finally get to, like interact with them in person yeah. it's so much fun i'm so awkward about yeah. that though it's like you go to all vidcon or all these different events and you watch people for so long and you kind of become a fanboy or yeah. you know of, of their channels yeah and then you meet them and i like i freeze up i'm like uh, really uh, a little bit Wait, yeah who? totally no say say some names say some names well, everybody like no, any, it come on, anybody it, me i met graham the other day um at the, the ping pong thing yeah. yeah and i was like uh like i just forget no yeah, oh my yeah totally Gosh. it's weird no it's weird meeting youtubers like being wow. in the space but like who who shocked you the most who shocked me the most because for you it's like you were probably one of the biggest youtubers i've yeah. ever met so I mean, you're probably, the, probably the biggest person we've had on the podcast but i like watch yeah. youtube so it's everybody i watch i'm like when i right. meet them i'm like a, a little bit thrown back you know yeah no i, uh, I feel that yeah i watch a, like a little bit in the you know fine like what i listen to on my drive i have a long drive in la so i listen to a lot of finance stuff because mm -hmm. you guys actually make long form like this yeah, you know podcast right. not everybody does that um so like i'll be starstruck to meet andre i'll be starstruck to meet no. are you meeting uh, them We've, see, we've DM'd, but you it should meet him. Like, you'd love to meet I him. I will ne next time. I oh, will okay. next time because okay. I want to spend time with you guys. But, okay, cool. Um, right like, answer. <laughs> like Andre and uh, and Kevin. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I listen to Kevin every day. Me too. At yeah. some point yeah. during the day. <laughs> so it's and true. he's like he's yeah. like right down the street from me too. Yeah. But I feel like one. I think he's super busy. Like I don't even want to DM him to say let's hang out. Oh, we, he'll we, do it. We briefly DM. Yeah. No, because I've seen he. he does he sleep? I don't know. No. Like three hours a night. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. So I feel like it's taken away from family time or like some sort of, he, I, here's what I picture. You're hanging out with Kevin. He's like, okay. dang, we hung out for an hour and a half. I could have made two YouTube videos. You know, I could have knocked No, you would He's not really believe it. Yeah, yeah. We were playing He'll, poker over yeah. at Jeremy's house and it was like, it was like, it was like midnight probably. And Graham's like, all right, dude, I have to go home. Like I got to get yeah. some sleep, you know, got to work tomorrow. <sighs> Kevin's still there. He's already down three grand in poker. And then we keep playing 2 a.m. rolls by and he's all, all right. You guys going to the club? <laughs> 2 a.m. Yeah, 2 a.m. And the next morning, he probably woke up at 6 yeah. and pumped out seven videos. Yeah, went live like, at 6, yep. yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's ins he's yeah. nuts. Kevin will find a way to make a video with you during the time that you hang out. Mm, yeah. It's either with you, he'll just monetize that conversation, yeah. right. or he'll be like, wait a second, I'll be right back. And he'll be outside for 10 minutes, recording a whole video, he'll upload it. It's already it posted. It's nuts. One you won't take. even notice. Yeah. In one yeah. take, and it's like a fully scripted. His post-production pipeline, I have no idea. I've seen, you know, seen his tour of the, mm -hmm. I think it's, in, is he in a garage still? No, it's a room Did in his he house. actually get, okay. Yeah. Oh, he upgraded to a room. He's always um, had the He's room. always had a room. Yeah. That's still impressive that he hasn't gone out to like a studio. No. Never. Um, it's but, all one room in, in a house. His room, by the way, is smaller than this. That's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, my, my space is like, it just, just doesn't translate to a room. <laughs> I wish it did. That'd be awesome. Yeah. We want to hear about what you're doing now. Because I have to say, you. it's it's very impressive across all the platforms. Like you found a way to dominate like Instagram. TikTok, YouTube, your YouTube shorts, Vine. by the way. Vine, yeah. yeah. That was never the master plan, though. Like, I never wanted to go after, right at this point, when you look back, doing this for 12 years, start on YouTube, it's gone, it's always added them slowly, you know, and then some don't stick around. There's actually so many that don't stick around that you don't realize. Like, my, my idea uh, is always to be on a platform first and see if there's anything interesting about it. Like, with Vine, it was the six second things, and I kind of wait. Now I try to get there a little before my friends are talking about the app. Um, but in Vine, I was like way behind. I remember that was even a thing. Like when mm -hmm. I got on nine months later and it blew up, for me, a lot of the other Viners were like, well, you're not an original Viner. And it's so funny how that that like nuanced conversation is gone for platforms now. But back in the day, it was like, if you weren't on it within a year, you weren't the OG of that platform. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been bouncing around platforms. Like YouTube was my first love. I started with tutorials. So like, 
Uh, you, you guys don't have a monthly training or master class or any of that. The final cut? Have, oh, wait, yeah. we have a monthly. Do you guys training. have a monthly? We have a mentorship Shout group. Shout out to the mentorship group. Shout out to the mentorship Yeah, there's a <laughs> coupon down, code down, down below. below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sure. So you have, is it monthly? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so like, I was kind of doing those, but like making my own site for Final Cut Pro and teaching people. And that was my business. Like YouTube was my business just with that monetization aspect. There was no AdSense when I started. Um, and then I think a year after I started my channel, there was they were rolling out secretly or privately the uh, invite to the partner program. Mm. Um, when you guys started YouTube, you could just sign up, right? Like you mm -hmm. had the, yeah. the threshold. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're monetized yeah. basically immediately. Yeah, I think they monetize people who don't even ask anymore. It's just you're rolled into something right but you don't receive the money oh is that right yeah yeah they can, now youtube has the right to monetize any channel they want to and not and run and, an ad but they could they have to tell you right and and i know i believe can you just out? by default by default i think by huh. uploading youtube you i mean yeah, you're giving so them the rights that just recently changed right Isn't that yeah kind of yeah a few months ago so i have like a thousand seven hundred subscribers uh-huh and when my family watches my videos they get ads but i don't get any of that right yeah. oh interesting but first i want to thank our sponsor front jack what are you doing on your phone man dude i'm just checking my robin hood portfolio i'm buying the bitcoin dip that's great and all but why are you not using front it's the ultimate companion app to robin hood weeble coinbase and more it basically shows you all your investments in one place Wait, so you're saying if I download Front, I can see all of my investments with all of those different brokerages and exchanges in one place? Exactly. That's amazing. Not only that, Jack, but it actually gives you a unique Front portfolio score. It basically sums up the health of your total portfolio within a single number. And the AI that gives you the Front score actually takes into account diversification, asset performance, company financials, and much more. Plus, Front shows you the top stocks to increase your Front score so you can build a stronger portfolio. And there's even a community feature where you can follow your friends' portfolios and see how you compare to them. Jack, I'm actually going to follow you on Front and every time i see your portfolios up i'm gonna ask you for lunch alex you can't say that i already said i would do that exact same thing to you so if you guys want free lunch just follow alex on front his username is apple pie and anytime his portfolio is up just venmo request him like 10 bucks or something so go ahead and download front with the link in the description down below to see how your portfolio stacks up today that's right guys you can see all of your investments all in one place on the easiest ui ever so that's front thanks front for sponsoring this episode and back, back to, to the, the podcast, podcast. kind of makes sense yeah. that youtube is it is, would be is, smart yeah, yeah. I mean, there's right probably, there, yeah. I would love to know the calculate how many videos are out there that typically wouldn't get monetized because they're not a creator hit the threshold. Right. It's probably, I have a feeling what yeah. it is, the ad rates are getting so high on certain, certain channels that they need to spread them out because otherwise yeah. advertisers are going to get to a point where it just doesn't make sense. But yeah. if they have twice the channels now to advertise to, they're getting twice the exposure. Yeah. Yeah. I just jumped yeah. around platforms year, like YouTube. I loved it, but then Vine took off and it was like. I was still running like one man show, mm -hmm. had just hired my first producer to help me with the Vine stuff, but the bandwidth was what, like going to Vine. What year was this? Did you go to the, college? I went to college, yeah. You did. What 2008 did you through 2013. Oh, the recession, the great recession. Yeah. That's when I would have gone to college, yeah. by the way. If I went, it was 2008. Yeah, I went to college yeah. and I paid through college with those training courses. So I started my channel like that freshman year of mm. college. And uh, it's because I didn't get into film school. So I needed like an outlet to do. I was still mm -hmm. doing music, but I really wanted to, uh, pursue film i knew i like film was going to be my end all career mm -hmm. um it's kind of lucky to know that but i was teaching the final cut pro stuff at night i was doing tutorials and live training and that's how i was paying through school and selling dvd courses and then eventually um right when amazon launched their cloud service i uploaded all my stuff my courses digitized them and started selling them through paypal and uh, i think there was like a uh not venmo but another like weird pay, yeah, pay yeah. Or payment mm -hmm. service and uh, I did that all the way to graduating college. Um, and then the first year out of college, I think it was when, is when Vine came out. Mm -hmm. And that really, I was already making these videos. They weren't like, if you look at my videos now, you'd say that they're, you know, I describe them as magic just because it's simple and that's what mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh yes, I know what you're talking about. Um, like jump in a car and you kind of phase through and now you're in that item. Yeah. So. That was really a spinoff of like my VFX training that I had learned and, and taught myself in film school. And Vine, because it was six seconds, it just forced me to like figure out how to like make those in a short story that had a beginning, middle and end and like had a good punchline, was really visual. And that's like how that format that I'm known for now really was birthed. But 
I, I love the constraints of limitations. Like it's kind of crazy that on YouTube, there used to be a ton of limitations. Like it was for a while, 15 minute videos and, and it slowly grew and now mm -hmm. it's like what unli unlimited. Yeah. I um, think 24 hours, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I love the constraints still. Like it would be fun if YouTube was like this month, you can only post three minutes or whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can't do that now. They're too big. Yeah. But you see every platform like slowly when Instagram was the thing, it was like 15 seconds and then they upped yeah. it to 60 and then 90 and then 120. Um, same with TikTok now. I don't even know what their limit is now. Maybe three minutes. Is it three minutes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, nobody watches a three minute. Well, I think people do. Sometimes yes. people yeah. do. Now, the three good. minute videos give you the option to skip around. Yeah. yeah. So that's their right. thing. Because sometimes I've seen, I hate these videos. There was one where it was like a, a river mm -hmm. on TikTok and it was like a minute long. And it was just like, wait for it. And then after 10 seconds, you're, you're not going to believe two this. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole thing was it went get to by, like a fish and it was like, out? watch part two. No. And like, and yeah. And I that's clicked the, the part worst. two. I clicked it. But this video had like, 10 million views on it. So I figured like, it's gotta be good. No, and then it the just part had two high retention. was literally them like throwing a brick over the oh side. That's and really the, satisfying. But, but it wasn't that, it was just a brick. I mean, it was like what you would expect. But you could also chop that into 10 seconds. Yeah. You're like, yeah. dude, you were, you yeah. knew your retention tricks. Right. That's funny. So at least through three minute videos, they don't hold you to that for three minutes. You could skip and be like, right. all right, well, this sucks. Yeah. So you're saying yeah. that the time constraint on Vine being six seconds kind of taught you how to condense like very exciting content into like short. I form. love co time constraints. I absolutely love them. It's like one of the, you know, I think when people think creativity, they think, oh, like, well, I want endless, I want no rules. I want no boundaries. I want to mm -hmm. have like endless space to do my art. But people, um, especially young creators, I always tell them like when you're making something, go on the weekend and your goal is to make a 30 second thing or a 10 second thing and then go, whether you want to publish it or not, that's on you. But that's the iteration you need is like, ideally start shorter and then you can add up the time. That's fascinating. And I, now I think like to the other Viners that then made it to YouTube, like Logan Paul and mm -hmm. Jake and like David Dobrik, they're all very like quickly cut, yeah. right? It's very condensed uh, content. Yeah. Maybe they learned it from Vine, but it's done them very well. Yeah, I think because they, they know what holds attention and they know what makes a good story. And it's funny like being with, um, when you're with Logan or, or David, when they're, you'll go with them and then you'll, they'll be at events and not show it. Like they'll be at these awesome events and not show a piece of it. Like mm -hmm. be at a premiere. I remember be at a pre premiere with uh, David and I went back in the vlog the next day and was like, oh, I wonder what, how much of that he used and none. And it's cause I, uh, and to me, I was like, that was pretty entertaining, right? Like yeah. you could use a piece of that, nothing. It's like, you gotta cut it. And I think yeah. like great editors know when to cut stuff out too. Like it's like, you know, they call it killing your baby um, in editing in Hollywood. Like mm -hmm. a lot of directors get attached to the certain shot they got they right. spent they remember being on set all day getting that really cool dolly shot and they want to use it but if it's not adding to the story or taking away from a moment it, you got to be okay yeah. to cut it wasn't it david dobrik or someone was talking about him being at like a tesla event and like there's something big hmm. that happened and he didn't use any of it just like you said yeah i could totally and they're like that. that was like the, the coolest thing i've ever seen and it didn't even make his video huh. of that week yeah which i is, mean that's yeah. that's a lot of youtubers you know that right. know really to trim the fat Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Mr. B, Jimmy's great at that. Yes. Oh, yeah. You see them shoot and half, over half doesn't make it in. It's probably amazing. 95%, I would yeah. imagine, of yeah. that. They're yeah. probably using like a sliver of the day. Right. I've heard that like Mr. Beast, his like total gigabytes that each video occupies is like several terabytes. I believe it. Like oh, per video. Down. Yeah. And they cut it down to like, you know, 13. Especially the videos where they have like a hundred GoPros, you know, yeah. on yeah. individual yeah. people. And I don't yeah. know, I asked them, that was the first question I asked them, like, who is going through that? And he was like, oh, yeah, our, do we have editors? But like, he was like, usually it's two editors a video. I'm like, oh two my it's two. <laughs> but to me, that's, is that a lot to you? That's little to me. No, that's very few. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I would like imagine like 10. Yeah. But yeah. then again, communicating between 10, I feel like it would lose that feel. That's true. like two yeah. people themselves doing it all would know every bit of it versus 10. So they here's the trick I yeah. learned um, being on, I was on a show called The Amazing Race with my wife a couple years ago. You were, you were on that show? Yeah. Where you I love you that yeah, show. Yeah, it's a great show. I watched it as a kid growing up with my family. Wow. And so did I. On the, to, to let people know who don't know the show, yeah. The Amazing Race, you go around the world, you're hunting for clues, and you you know go on these different legs of the race, and you're trying to get to the finish line of these multiple day legs. And what I learned is you know they're obviously capturing terabytes and terabytes of footage from multiple teams every single day but they have a producer go with you, a story producer. And the producer like is not affecting the game at all. They won't give you, they don't even know what's happening, mm -hmm. but they have just in their notes, a little app that has a timestamp 
and they're just saying like, you know, Zach and Rachel fight at whatever uh, this time over this clue. That's an, and they're like rating these oh, story points. Wow. So the editors, you know, you're not. I mean, maybe that somebody will go through everything, of, of course. Yeah. But really, the main even assistant editors will just skip through most of it. And it's same with Jimmy's videos or all these reality shows. Like, they don't need to go through everything as long as they've got the the story producers there, just giving the timestamps. It's so much easier. You know, it cuts the good stuff. That's incredible. And so then all yeah. the story producers meet at night after you check into the hotel or whatever that leg of the race and they'll all just kind of compare notes like was this team who had the most you know kind of drama let's like it seems like fun. kind of and like they're not changing it in the edit that's what's yeah. amazing to me i always wondered because i was a fan of the amazing race like are they like fake making up this drama and like editing it in a way that made it seem way worse than it was yeah. or is the order actually accurate in the edit but it's mm -hmm. like a hundred percent true so through college you paid for it with these with these programs which college did you go to I went to a school called Biola University out in uh, Fortin, La Mirada, California. Okay. Yeah. And how much was it? Oh, was uh, it expensive school? Really, or? Yeah, it was a private Christian school. Wow. It was probably yeah. 30000 a year, so you know, 120000 Can you say wow. how much you were making then with this, like, uh, the mentorship program that you had? I made just enough to cover school. So you make like, 30 grand a year, or 40 probably. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. And then AdSense taxes, kicked in. Yeah. I just recently looked too. I was like, how much was I making at AdSense? It was barely, and you know, I was definitely in the ramen days of, of college. Mm. My thing was like chicken wings. There was, you guys know Albertsons? Yeah. Yeah. So they have Albertsons out here. Um, they had like a really good chicken wing lunch deal. I ate every single day. It was that, and I would have pho for dinner for like $7.50. <laughs> there you go. And it's I was good. like, seven fifty was splurging for me yeah, yeah. on pho. Yeah. So that was my, my college meal, and it was like everyday pho, like everyday chicken wings. So you're probably and, making about 40 grand a year. Yeah. How much of a falling following did you have at that time um i had at most on final uh two hundred thousand followers that was your like youtube subscribers. Subscribers. That was at the peak before i left to vine and i remember like within three months of vine i'd already passed it to like almost uh half a million on vine there was a point where the it actually back you know like platforms don't really grow your youtube that quickly anymore mm -hmm. but back in the day if you said like from your vine account if you had a couple million followers mm -hmm. you're like hey go follow me on youtube it would just wow. shoot up yeah and uh, I never took advantage of that. I always was nervous about cross pollinating, and it's the game has totally changed on social media now. Now everybody wants to cross pollinate because it's kind of hard to get that right, conversion. Right. But back then, I never wanted to. I, I was actually really weary of collabs. I never wanted my following to be from you know mm -hmm. King Batch's audience. I didn't know like if they would stay with me or if they were just following for that one collab. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually wish I took advantage of collabs earlier. Like it was something, I think it's a, it's a great, it's a huge strength. way to grow your channel. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a huge way. Um, but it's actually slowed down a lot. Like if I were to shout you guys out or you were to shout me out, it's just slow. Like yeah. it's not like I, back in the day, you see, you would yeah. be like, if I shouted you out back in the day with the followers, now what's I back now, in the day, 2013, Wait, 13. Okay. Like maybe if what, I don't know, uh, what do we have now? Um, you might get like a million followers really? somewhere, you know, but it, that doesn't happen anymore. Like it might be like. 10,000 right yeah like so it's there's no conversion right so did you decide to pursue any sort of normal career after college or was that your cue you make it 40 grand a year you got a good following I did like, I um I had a great offer because I was making 40 and then I think somewhere I was probably making 60,000 uh, on the training courses and I thought like okay that's a great I could make a living doing that I could grow it slowly too and I had all these ways to like do different courses and kind of spin off I was only focusing on one software and there's way more softwares coming out. Adobe Cloud was getting pretty popular at the time. Um, but I didn't, um, I got a job. I did a road trip with my buddies for a YouTube video. We wanted to like make a video in different states and it was kind of like a content trip. Mm. And so we spent like 40 days going around the country and in Washington DC, I stopped at Discovery Channel. We had a, a fan reach out and was like, hey, I work as a producer at Discovery Channel. You want to come hang out and get lunch at the cafeteria and so i went in there and it was my first time in like a corporate kind of film tv building and i met one of the higher up producers and they made us a job me and my buddy a job offer for over six figures and and it was super tempting like my channel is looking at it like uh oh, one it's youtube i don't know i mean it's so easy to look back now and be like oh yeah youtube yeah, sure. was the obvious front runner and the good decision decision but I was really conflicted. Like I remember calling my parents on the drive back and it was the drive back was like 5,000 miles. So I was like slowly talking mm -hmm. over the next couple of weeks as we were making our way back to LA, like 
should I do this interview in LA that I have to do for discovery? And so I, I ended up doing the interview and it was such a, a like a blessing in disguise interview because me and my buddy go in, we had a great interview. But my last question for the guy, he was like, do you have any more questions for me? Like uh, for, he was like the head LA branch guy. And I was like, okay, would you, if you were me, would you take this job? And I had explained the YouTube thing because I was really conflicted. I was like, my YouTube channel has maybe, I think I had 200,000 followers at that time, but I wasn't making great money. It's like 1200 a month on AdSense. Mm. So I was like, I don't know if like, I can actually get married and, and have kids with this. So he was like, I don't know, like YouTube uh, is an interesting space. I think he had a lot of great insights. He was like, I don't know if I would take that yet. Mm. And he's like, what's the risk of you, I don't know, playing this out another year, year and a half, two years. I was like, oh, there's, there's no risk. I'm like, I'm eating pho. I can afford that. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, that's all you need, really. Yeah, that's yeah. all I needed. And so luckily that like decision, I walked out of that meeting so peaceful. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to take this. Wow. Me and my buddy looked at each other. And he had, and started a uh, channel at that time too, which is, uh, do you guys know Aaron's Animals? I yeah. briefly yeah, introduced yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, the VFX bro, dude. Yeah, yeah. VFX yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. So he started his channel at that time too. So we both have kind of changed directions with our content or we do, you know, just he does animal stuff. I do um, the magic stuff, but both of our channels are like kind of equally successful mm. um, just because we put the time in. But that's amazing. Yeah. And that's crazy to me too, because you had like 200,000 subscribers, but you're making $40,000 a year. It's like nowadays, if you have 200,000 subscribers, you're golden yeah. basically on YouTube. Yeah. Well, for some channels, you yeah, know, I think really, yeah. if you can pull, it really views. depends. Right. You guys are in the finance space. So <clears> I think you're, you're skewed, but, uh, <laughs> if you have a good engaged audience with 200,000 views, yeah. I, I think in any niche, cause you could at least have sponsorships, affiliates, like there are other ways and that you, you can just market your an audience. Biz, yeah. Business. I think the training course as aspect is yeah. still highly interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't do it anymore, but I'm jealous of the people that have an obvious, like, oh yeah, teach that. That makes yeah. sense. Right. So you're building out this thing over the next year. At what point do you begin to realize that it's like a significant amount or, or at what point for you is it like, all right, I'm all in like th this was the right choice. I mean, I was all in at that point. Yeah. Um, what I wasn't sure of is how to scale. I think the hardest part for creators and this, for me back then and uh, what I see now is it's hard to scale yourself because you're figuring out like what part of yourself you need to scale. Is it like your editing? Is it your writing? Is it your production time? is it for me a lot of it was like the set building mm -hmm. took a lot of time and like trick engineering and i enjoyed that part but it was like what what part am i good at and for the first one i had to let go was like the editing of the videos um so i started training editors like okay here's my exact style like here's how i make these cuts and here's how i here's how i shoot them and this is why i shoot them that way um and it's not like anybody can't reverse engineer what we do but it's just like a specific kind of angle of how we shoot it and edit it. Um, but like I had to let that go. And you know, the thought I had in my back of my head, I think so many creators have is like, oh, I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one that's skilled enough to do this. Or I'm like, I'm the only one to know when to cut because that's my style. I know he's looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Why is it so hard to let go? Uh, because I'm worried that that's like, that's that's the personality of the channel is that at least for the main channel is that everything is done by me mm -hmm. so every word you hear from me is scripted by me yep. every topic is picked by me yep um i film everything myself it's and i like the aspect especially in finance that it's just it's a guy in a room talking to a camera by himself yep doing all the work and there's something i think that's really authentic about that yeah that once you start outsourcing things and trying to streamline things you just you lose that feel Maybe, um, okay, let's take Jim Cramer, for example. I don't know if you like Jim Cramer. <laughs> people have mixed feelings about Jim Cramer. I'm just, Some I, people, uh, I'm just yeah. saying, because he's a general finance person that most people on your channel Dave know. Ramsey. Right? Dave, okay. Dave Ramsey. Sure. We like Dave Ramsey. All let's right. talk about Dave Ramsey. <laughs> what is Dave Ramsey's, like, why do people follow him? For his advice. For him. So yes. like nothing about the editing. No. Nothing about the production value like all those things are standard correct that's what i think so like uh for, that's where i'm coming yeah, from. yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the viewer like, cares but, but, who yeah, edits it I, I do because i think uh half the video or honestly i think of the video tw i think 20 percent is knowledge or 20 percent is just what the information is the other 80 percent is entertainment 
So throughout my script, I try to keep it entertaining. I try to like throw in jokes or make comparisons that people might think is funny. And the editing is very visual, so I like to throw in little jokes and mm -hmm. things here and there that I feel are important to the viewer here's, that I would want to Here's see. what I think you'll be surprised to find. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever reached out to fans, but I think um, we actually just put a job posting for fans because um, for many years I was like against working with fans. I thought it was weird because, you know, when we had hired a few fans, like they get really excited. They're overly <laughs> excited to be around you. But after like after six months, it dies off. They become, you know, just chill with you. And, yeah. But they know your brand and style. They literally know, like some of my team know my library better than I do. They'll be like, oh, but we already did that. Remember, like you did that in 2014 in this one video with uh, this person. And I'll be like, oh yeah, we did. A wow, the jump cut, I forgot about that. And that's, I'm, I'm here's my bet. Yeah. There's probably a dozen people watching your channel who are editors that if you said, hey, will you edit for me? They actually already are editing your style. One reason they might like your videos and they understand some of the humor. And so I think there's an editor. I know so there's I'll, multiple editors. I'll interject. I've been teaching Alex yep. how to edit those videos. Yeah. And so what I've been doing this last month is uh, I'll have Alex edit my video and I edit mine separately. And then we compare our videos yeah. the next day. Yeah. And we'll go through them each side by side. And what I've noticed is that Alex is now starting to make the same jokes in the same places as me. Yeah. So I'm talking that, about like that's endless money it, printing. He's using the same thing that I'm it's doing. It's funny you're, you're, doing, slowly, you're doing it that way. Yeah. I did that briefly and I was like, why the heck am I editing this twice? I'm just going to use my version. I know. Um, versus there's a point where you have to let, you actually well, just have to let Today's video go. was one of the first ones that Alex did. That nice. I posted. Alex. Yeah. Round of applause for Alex. Let's see how it's Good doing. Good job, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, doing, Appreciate it, guys. It did, yeah, I, I don't know why it didn't do well initially, but I'm hoping it's, uh, let's see if it's picking. You can't up blame it on that. Alex. You can't blame yeah, that on Alex. That's too bit. much pressure. It's picking up a little bit. Okay, yeah. it's picking up. I think what yeah. your your money sauce is, obviously your, your personality, but your insights into topics that you pick and how you talk about them. Yeah. So you should be involved in the writing process. I even would totally uh, gamble that you don't need to write the video. So you could just, Ooh, I don't know. I, the yeah, same thing with editors. Yeah. There's so many writers out there yeah. who are in, and I don't want to offend you, but yeah. better than all of us. Like even when I look at my stuff, I'm like, there's writers that are better than me that have ideas. And so if they can work into your process where like, what if you had a list of five people that they don't have to be in-house, it could be For freelance sure. that you're like, Hey guys, Make it a competition, kind of like you're doing with Alex. Um, whoever writes the best script will get the higher end fee or whatever. But mm. you say, hey, I want to talk about, I'm really interested in talking about this new NFT platform or whatever. Um, or maybe you're not, I, I don't know. Yeah, but like sure, whatever it is, sure. yeah. boom. Um, and then here are my three main points I want to hit for sure. Uh, maybe you have a specific joke, you know, you want to make in it and you have them write that and then see what is in, you know, because there is some fleshing out in the middle of that, the meat that you probably don't need to spend your time writing. Like looking up, you probably do a lot of research, right? Like I do, but stats. part of that is I have to really understand to be able to pick out the points that I sure. feel are worth emphasizing. Yeah. So sometimes in my research, I'll think I know it all. Mm -hmm. But then as I'm doing the research, I come across something different and I'm like, wow, this is actually a better angle and I'll reorient the video about something new. Yeah. What if somebody brought you a script though that said like, you read it and you're like, oh man, I actually don't know. Is that true? Like, hmm. And from there you, you like they do the legwork. This big yeah. eighty percent push. Uh, it's it's hard for me because what I've done has worked so yeah. well and yeah. it's still working. So yeah. I'm like, why try to mess with it right now? Yeah, are that's all. Are you control freak? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would say so, but I I don't want to say it's a control freak. I think I, I'm very particular and I and I, I have a vision for something, and if it's not exactly that, I don't want to I don't want to do it. Yeah, I I didn't know about your yeah. guys' uh, partnership that you explained in the beginning, but that yeah. makes me excited for you because <laughs> I think it empowers him. Yeah. And Jack's gonna be stoked and take on a bulk of the work. And that's what you need to do, not necessarily on the main channel and not overnight, but at leverage, dude. Mm -hmm. You gotta leverage other people. Yeah. Well, that's that's Alex. You gotta listen to that. That's, that's Alex's goal right now for yeah. the end of the year. I wanna train him perfectly for the main channel edits. So okay. that by January 1st, I want him to be able to take Okay, over. is it a thing for, yeah. it's a thing for YouTubers though. Like, okay, so what's what's Kevin's team like? Does he, it's, is there it's any, really it's pretty just, small. Yeah, it's is him, it just him. It's him, but and he has two assistants that will help him with anything. They do research. For they, okay. they will. So do now research. they like they, they just like, started doing that, but that was like as of a month ago. What about what about research. Andre? Just him. It's just just him. him. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got to leverage. But how many Fuck. videos is Andre posting per week? Twice a week. He's posting twice a week, and we're posting like I don't know, ten times a week nine. across nine times a week across Whoa. like five channels. Yeah. So what? And what's your guys' production team? Is it Alex? 
Is it the three of you? Yeah. Right here. This is the <laughs> We're team. in the room with the production yeah. team. The this three is, yeah, this is the entire, this is everything across five channels. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So but that's what I like. It's like it's a small team. Yeah. We we just hang out. We're friends. Yep. We, we don't we have just, to be friends with the new person we bring on. We don't have that, that's, like, that's usually that's what that's it, usually though. what happens. Yeah. I think it's really important that your business doesn't like, okay, when we moved into our first studio, we went from house that was uh twenty two hundred, maybe like nineteen hundred square feet. There was like twelve of us jammed in this thing, super family vibes, like we were all friends, and then we moved into this warehouse that's fifteen thousand square feet. Our offices are like we had to we were racking up like the steps just to walk around to go meetings and talk to each other. It felt super corporate for like the first six months in there because we were like, How do we manage this in a weird like we like being in a house and in the neighborhood? And but it what it did is like help streamline the operations. Then we realized like kind of separating each other and it wasn't just like a Hey, you're right here. Let me ask you this question that I really should like, maybe we should set a meeting for and like think about and talk about, um, versus like randomly kind mm -hmm. of interjecting here and there. And it's almost like the house version is, uh, when I look back, like it was fun, but it's so much chaos and we were getting a lot done, but it's like the, the warehouse and the studio version allowed us to like figure out what the, re like really break apart. What is the process that needed to happen for the videos? Maybe you guys are already good at that in this setting. I think we are. We each got we each got rooms. Alex just upgraded. This is now his office. He was working in the laundry room. Yeah. For the last uh, yeah, eight months. Yep. And now he's uh, moved. Hey, this is a, this is an upgrade. This is a huge upgrade. Yeah. yeah. We're all we're all introverted. So realistically, we don't go and bug each other. No, like yeah. if I want. Hey, see, that works out. Yeah, yeah. If I want to see Graham, um, I have to text him ahead of time. Like yeah. I'll never just barge into his office, and he does the same for me. That might yeah. be a, that might be a good rule. I understand that. I'm an yeah. introvert too. I just can't imagine going into an office. That's the thing. I love just being able to walk 20 feet and it's right there. If I need Alex, I knock on the door. I just love it because yeah. you guys are going to take this clip someday. Yeah. And I'm like, on your side. You're like, remember when I said that we're never going to be in an office? Because it, yeah, it's, 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 kind, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of inevitable, right? Yeah. Like it's, it stresses me. Why how are we going to continue to grow with the same team? Why is it inevitable though? I, I don't because know, we, like, it, I mean, okay, me it's, people and overhead and obligations. Then, then, then I gotta pay either rent or a mortgage on a place. More people to keep track of. I love that. Wouldn't that, you be excited to pay a mortgage on a place though? Because you'd be starting to own it. I just, I don't want stress. Yeah. Like I've been trying now to like have the least amount of stress as possible. Yeah. And if that's I don't a have great to goal. Think about like something if that's anymore, your goal, it is. That yeah. I mean, that's a sweet. I get that. Yeah. I, I'm the same just, too. Like payroll and and team members and doing hr and all oh, that gosh i can't yeah you know all i want to think about is what topic am i going to talk about that that's the only thing that i want to think about yeah that's it but you you yeah. can put like a great uh relations person between you like you don't have to be the person that you know is hiring or even talking to people and my my like i hate conflict and i really hate anytime i have to like or back in the day when i was the one that had to say like hey here's what you're doing wrong or like the oh the worst is uh yearly reviews right like employee reviews which mm -hmm. i was doing for a long time and now i don't do that because yeah. it emotionally like will take me out of that for two weeks from what i'm making I'm like only thinking about like oh, in two weeks i have these meetings that i have to like tell people what they're doing yeah. wrong or build them up in these ways um i just love the collaboration and creating that's what's fun so tell us about your team. Yeah, how many people you have working for you? Yeah, like what what is involved in, in behind the scenes for your operation? So at the studio we have like twenty full time team oh that do gosh. the. <laughs> you're already stressed. Yeah, I'm stressed out. <laughs> All right, so you can get continue. people to manage the, yeah. the team for you. Well, let's uh, see. Yeah, but so a lot of it is a production team, right? Um, but it's through the whole process. So the beginning is pre production team, which could be writers. Um, it's development, a lot of the trick development. So. Uh, there's a trick development team that'll say, Hey, you know what? In a couple of months, let's do, let's do an upside down room that can like, maybe it can turn. You guys figure out how to like, if it needs to turn or whatever, and I'll pitch the concept and they'll go off and like engineer how that could be done. Both the building of it, the fabrication, but also like, what is the aesthetic visually of that trick? And they might input on that and we'll just meet for a couple months on that. Um, and that's like the writing pre -pro, pro. And then we have an art team with the production team. Um, but really it's like this arm of producers that kind of do everything from in that process. So there's seven producers that are like, well, every Monday go over all the concepts that we want to do. Anyone on the team, even if you're in, um, like our CFO joins the meeting for pitching an idea, it's like an hour and a half creative room. We put all, we put what's called the T sheet. So you literally draw a T 
on one end, you put the uh, paragraph, like little two sentences about what the idea is. Maybe it's we're at Graham's uh, house and we're going to do something with uh, bankroll coffee. I'm going to grab the beans and turn it into coffee. And then I draw a little image of that just so it can be visualized for people, just a, a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And then write the idea. It's called Graham's bankroll coffee trick. And we put them on the wall. We'll have, you know, 50 ideas up there. And then at the end, everyone gets two little votes and just a little smiley face. It's not like for a competition at all, but it's just mark your favorite idea. Like which one would you want to watch? Which one would you, if it was on your feed, would you like, or which one would you share with a friend? Cause it's interesting. And it's just a matter of taste. And that actually gives us a really good gauge uh, of like usually two or three concepts rise to the top. And I love that because it's, it's based on everybody's taste as a group. And generally, those aren't always the ones that get made, but uh, usually they're the ones that get workshopped and then eventually there's kind of light bulb moments in there and we, we make those ideas. So it's like a group writing process. Um, Cause a lot of people th have come up to me and they're like, how do you get these ideas? And it's not, you know, in the beginning it was me, uh, but now it's really just kind of my tone and some of my sentiment in there. And I love the visuals and, and obviously polishing along the way, but it's really these, the producers that take these concepts and make them come to life. And then once you green light them on t the next day on Tuesday, there's a green lighting process. So mm. you have to have a mock-up video. We have them quickly go out after a Monday meeting, they go out and shoot the video like on their phone or on a DSLR really rough mock mock up. They're really janky. You can't, if you guys watch them, you wouldn't know mm. what's going on, but we understand like the visual language that they're playing with, but it shows us the framing. It tells us if, it, if the joke is gonna, if we're doing a kind of a humorous thing, that's gonna play off or if just the trick visually will work. And then from there we sign a budget and it's off to the races. So they have two weeks to make that what's video. What's the budget? What's a, what's a normal it, budget for it, something It like totally that? depends. Like some of our stuff, obviously the brand stuff, uh, we could spend six figures to make, um, for our stuff, it, it, it's all over. Like a lot of it. So if we're using a rotating room, which could cost six figures to build, uh, we've already got that and we'll use that for multiple videos. Mm. Um, could you explain a rotating room? A rotating room. Yeah. Okay. So a rotating room has been a concept since like, uh, pretty early film days, actually like Nickelodeon days, but mm. obviously people know, um, inception the scene where the the room is rotating and they're, they're or, or the room's rotating is how they're doing it <clears throat> they're running on the walls and it looks like they're running on the ceiling so what you do is you have like a fixed circle yeah. cylinder and then you put a camera here and it's locked to that room so the, because the camera's moving with the room you can't notice the camera move and that's why oh. you know i'm able to walk on on the ceiling or on the side of the wall wow because gravity's actually changing for me that's crazy yeah so those are the fun stuff in the, you know, because of the studio space that we're able to build. So you're saying it takes two weeks to make a video? On average, yeah. For our, what we call like our personal content, which is our main slate, what you guys see as the, the videos that are unbranded, that's what and it takes. how long, because I've seen some of your TikToks of like 30 to 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of your shorts yeah. that could be like 10 seconds long. Yeah. Is that how long it takes you to make the 10 second video? Yeah, it's usually a minimum two weeks now. No. Because so. the one I saw that I really liked was the tap dancing video. Yeah. Where you were tap yep. dancing with a mirror, the mirror and then it comes out and you watch how you did that, that kind of stunt. Right. That was two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. And, that, and those are fun because <laughs> they're all on camera. Is that a lot of time? I can't tell if that's a lot yeah, of time. That is so because, long. That's a lot of time. Because that was a six second video. Oh, to me, two weeks is, is pretty fast. Uh, early days, like I could knock them out, but they were really simple. Like the concepts now are way more complex. Um, from a production standpoint. So two weeks is a short amount of time. We've gotten wow. that down. Like it used to be, it could have been six months. How do you, you know? I'm curious how you make your money back on that. Because the one that I saw that I really liked too was the one you did with ZHC. Mm -hmm. And you bought the, the picture for $100. Yep. And we should throw up uh, some B-roll of this if we can. Yeah. And then you went into the picture to drive the car. And yeah. it was like the real thing was behind it. Right. How do you make money on that because it was such a short clip it's like where do you monetize yeah we we don't make money on that we lose money on those um that i mean they're really one <clears throat> i wouldn't do them unless i'm really excited about making them like as a filmmaker i love doing what i do so it's like i'm excited that i get to fund it but the our business is really leveraged on the branded side right so like these pieces are just growing the audience it's building the audience so that we could go out to a brand um 
do a production for them and then take that paycheck and put it back into the videos again and disperse them across wow. all the personal content. So that's your so, main source of income is just brand deals. Yeah, that's about 75% because AdSense for us is really low. Our CPM, we have a huge international audience too, which is awesome. But on the, the backside of that is like the CPM kind of gets washed yeah. out a lot. So can you share any of those numbers? I mean, I know I'll that's- I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you. Uh, I can't share it, but they're really bad. Okay, can, um, can we see it? We're not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna mention totally. what it is. You're just gonna get right, my you're reaction. You're just gonna get our live so, reaction, and guys. we're gonna we're gonna understand that this is before your own expenses. Um, while you're sharing that, would you mind going over like what what your overhead is a month for running something like this? Oh, I can't I can't share that, but okay, it's expensive. Um, this is the revenue. Yeah. <clears throat> You're gonna be shocked because wow. you guys make a ton. Oh wow! So what and chan- and what these ones, this? these oh, don't let these skew you because those are oh, like yeah. those are. Uh, I know YouTube. what it is. Yeah. The YouTube. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow. Can I see the uh, the views? What do you mean? If I go back. Just the real yeah. time. So most. Oh, swipe over. Oh, all, right. all right. Go to the top overview. Oh wow! Now, okay. So this is. M- is this the just the shorts or this is every oh this is everything? That's um wow. that is the main channel. The shorts is a separate one, which I need to show. Well, you saw it the I, other day. I, I caught a glimpse of it. Yeah. yeah, at the ping pong event. Wow. So he has eight point so seven that million real time views. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the highest I've ever. 8. Well, aside 7. from the ping pong thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most real time views I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 Here you go. Yeah. Wow. So it's not like we don't make really any money on AdSense. It's never Gosh. been a big business for us. Oh my! Lord. So we have to do, you know, the branded projects, which are awesome because they empower us to like keep paying off. It's, it's just it's a different model. Yeah. And there are a lot of YouTubers, um, especially in like the kids and family, that have to do it that way. Like the CPM is just not great on some channels. That's why I was saying you guys are skewed on finance. Right. You guys don't know how good you have it. Apparently wow. not. That CPM yeah, is yeah. money. See, it's it's interesting because all of our like. All of our friends and like the people who we talk to, they're all in finance. Right. Yeah. Everybody. Yep. So we'll compare AdSense numbers with each other. Right. We're all about on the same par in terms of like, you know, per thousand views or whatever. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's it's why I hate Social Blade. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's like no, yeah, it's for my, our yeah, channel, totally off. Right. But you know what? Uh, another channel that we that we compared with was Carter Sherrar. Yeah. Um, so CPM was really good, hmm. I would say. But he his is uh, just really clean, family friendly yeah. content. But his was like, really decent actually yeah, he's making a lot of money yeah. right yeah i think there's some that it just does really well and then uh i'm not sure i think the reason why is maybe your your content was a little bit shorter because i for it him short, but he does these 10 to 20 minute long videos but it's always been bad. we've had the channel even when we weren't uploading shorts it was always uh we would do compilations or whatever and they just never the cpm i think it's demographic magic i think it's demographics i mean yeah who's who's buying magic ads right exactly <laughs> So right now your main source of income would you would say sponsorships then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seventy five percent of our business is through branded content. And where's the other percentage going? Um, probably ten percent AdSense or mm-hmm. less. Uh, probably way less. Mm-hmm. And then um, we also do a lot of productions, so stuff where I won't be in them, my team will produce them. Uh, I might direct them or or help executive produce, but. Um, we are doing just, you won't see me in those. So we'll, for example, if you watch an Amazon ad right now online, you, know, we, th- you might even watch it and be like, wait, that was like, was that magic? Or was that like a VFX mm. trick? Huh. Um, so we, we did those pieces. Wow. Okay. So we'll do a lot of just commercial work that, you know, as a production company. Wow. It's, it's just interesting to hear all of these. I just think of expenses because I think for us, it's like when we talk about our overhead, we don't really have an office space. Yeah. Everything is just like really what you see here in my office over there. There's and I'm really, so jealous of that. Yeah. Like I wish it's I like, could fit a rotating room. I would here. say realistically, probably <laughs> 98% of what we make is probably just profit. Mm-hmm. And then whatever we spend on top of That's that is, incredible. is discretionary. Yeah. Yeah, it's no. just, do we need something? Can we improve something? Great. How can yeah. we improve? It's just, we don't need to do it. But See, I, you know. I enjoy the payroll. Payroll used to stress me out. I was like, oh man, like if uh, the business doesn't do well, like there's all these families right, that are depending right. on me. But one, I took away that stress knowing that like, you know what, if a business fails, like people are okay, they can go find, they'll, it will work out for them. Um, especially the people I work with, they're really talented, they have other options if that happens. So that got rid of that fear. But the other one is the the payroll, like I love 
actually paying my friends or my team and like working with them and and being able to collaborate like i'm secretly like i or i tell them all the time mm. but like i love that they're giving me their a piece of their life like a piece of their nine to five time mm -hmm. and sometimes beyond to collaborate on my stuff so i'm i'm really excited that i am able to finance that um and i don't care if it comes from you know like i'm paying way more than i should like yeah. i could do this solo or, or not so i couldn't I could do this with four or five people maybe mm -hmm. and try to take more profits, but that would be kind of lame. Can like, you say what percentage of profit you take from the total gross revenue? Oh, I pay myself a salary. So it's not based on any profit. It's just a flat salary. Yeah. Years ago with my CPA, we just set a salary of what yeah. you know, every, every company does that though. You just with an S corp, right, I'm right, guessing right. it's salary and you take mm -hmm. everything else is like a dividend or a distribution. Yeah, I, don't even, Sorry, I distribution. don't even take distributions, just a set. You know, salary. really? Yeah. Why so not take a distribution? Or is is because you for just me, I, uh, I don't like. I feel like I'm slightly hurting the business if I were to do that. Like, I just want to use that money. Uh, I'm not as extreme as Jimmy, where I'm like everything has to go back <clears throat> into the content. Like, I want to be able to slowly pull out some as a salary to save. But I am more on that extreme where it's like I want to be able to fund these cool projects. Yeah. And part of it's been. Like, I don't need a lot of money for myself to live, for my family. We live um, very comfortable, but we don't need excessive amounts. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's uh, taking enough to invest and then taking enough to uh, save. I'm trying to uh, build, purchase a building in LA for the warehouse, um, for the studio space. And so over the years, I've just been saving for that project, saving for other film projects, longer form right. stuff. Um, so that, the dream is to put it back into like the longer form stuff so that we want to do. The question is, why stay in California? You're oh. talking about... Dude. getting a building in los angeles and i know warning it's, signs are going off in my head i'm like you want to run a business in los angeles it's insane what it's insane why 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 do you it, i it's, knew you're gonna say that yeah it's um, it, that is probably the worst place i would say for anything film related terrible, terrible. and uh, i've heard stories from people in the film industry that are, are leaving because of how restrictive it is for anything film related during COVID, anything. a lot of people flocked away from the city yeah. i don't know i would love to know how many crew or production people left. Um, for me, when I did that road trip on in YouTube or years ago, like we went to 30 states mm -hmm. and I don't want to stereotype all the states, <laughs> um, but we, we hit up most like the major cities in them and, and went to the suburban areas and the urban areas. And we just had, I mean, we saw a lot and we stayed several days in each place and we all, I went with two other good friends of mine, best friends. We came back, we all said like, oh man, Southern California is the best spot. Like it is so prime geography wise, like weather wise, climate wise. Um, the fact that we can shoot every day, almost every day of the year and it's like beautiful out, mm -hmm. but you're next to the ocean. Like there's so, it's just like, I love Southern California as a climate. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I, and now, and now there's like I've been there for 15 years. That's where my friends are. That's where the group is. Like, how was it moving here? Like, easy, you best had, decision. But ever. you had your friends move out here, right? Like, a lot of people were here. Like the, well, a lot of people were here already. So we didn't move here knowing nobody. If we had, I would 80 say, 80 percent yeah. of my friends let move somewhere, and it was a great tax incentive too. Sure, I would think about it, but. I don't know, traveling, like I already do a lot of traveling. I don't wanna have to travel to LA to go shoot. I mean, like we shoot in LA all the time. That's, why where, that's where everybody comes. Yeah, why? I, I was shocked. That's where all the, like I was shocked, no, because I thought initially when uh, when I moved to West LA, that, and I was like, this is awesome because everyone was around like the same area, it was yep. so easy. And I, I remember thinking, this is before even considering a move anywhere else. It's just like, you can't really live anywhere else because there's an opportunity cost of leaving and what mm -hmm. is that gonna be? Because everyone's, like I ran into Colin and Samir yeah. on, on Main Street in Santa Monica. And it was through just randomly running into like, them there that that like a friendship built from that. Yep. So yeah, I'm gonna miss that. Uh, but little did I know, more people are excited to come to Las Vegas. Mm. I was shocked. Yeah, because there's something more else to here. do here, though. Like you have that for the that's yes, that's pretty, and it's like a short flight, what, mm. forty five minute flight. It's easy, and I've I've never like getting people to L A was difficult unless mm. they already live there. Right, but I'm shocked. I'll tell people like, hey, we're in Vegas. Be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do a trip there anytime, and it's yep. just like they'll make a weekend of it. Yeah, and they'll just come on the podcast. Yeah, so I, I don't that. know. I, I think it would be surprising, especially for filming, just the amount of space you could get. Mm -hmm.
is incredible. The, the tax savings are incredible. They're very business friendly. Yeah. And I remember even setting up uh, an S corporation in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and have, I think it was like a 1% S corp tax that I had to pay on top of everything else on whatever was left over in the S corporation. Yeah. It's like an extra 1% for what? And then I, I, I hit, I got hit with a uh, Los Angeles city tax that they just assumed I made money on an S on an LLC that I opened up. I didn't do anything for four years with it, nothing. Mm -hmm. And because I forgot to file an exemption on that, it's my fault. But you're supposed to file an exemption every single year that it's inactive. Yeah, I just even if there's about cash sitting in even there, it, just nothing. There was nothing. It was like a right. hundred bucks in the account. Right. Never used it. Um, I just forgot. But they sent me a tax bill for like seventeen grand Ooh. because for those four years they're like, well, because you didn't do anything, we're assuming you're going to make two hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm like, two hundred grand a year for what? But they taxed me based on that. It was a mess to try yeah. to unravel all of that. Huh. But that was Los Angeles, and I yeah. had to file that for every single LLC yeah. they opened up. Everything it was just horrible. Yep. So yeah, taxes. I was I was surprised to get out and just. Now that I was out after a few months, I can't even think about going back. I, I don't mind going back for a weekend and yeah. I find it really cool to like get out. Um, but no, I couldn't, I couldn't it go It would back. take a uh, Joe Rogan level deal for me to move. That makes sense. Yeah. But uh, I did look at some warehouse space in L in Vegas though, just online when I was here. I was like, there oh, I was like okay, cool. Graham's gonna ask me about this. What, yep. what do we have here? Um, yeah, your prices are definitely enticing. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's actually not, I was, was surprised. Like it's, ex, it is expensive. Yeah. Because everyone like, from California is where, moving here. Yeah. Warehouse space yeah. is like slightly cheaper here, but, uh, yeah, I would say it's probably 30% cheaper, but I don't, the, the, I, the spaces yeah. I was looking at though, like, here's the thing, yeah. warehouse and distribution space, which is kind of what I'm looking for, hasn't dropped a lot at all. Sure. Yeah, like it's, it's only going up because yep. everybody needs that. So yeah it's, it's uh it's yeah i'm okay i'm okay paying taxes to have what we have in la though like it's the vibes are great and, and, and not even la city like not all yeah. of la is awesome to me but just uh i let you nowhere else can you be like five minutes from the beach also in the mountains mm -hmm. also near one of the biggest production cities in the world Mm -hmm. Still, I know a lot of people left, but you know, when we do our shoots and productions, it's hard to know, right? Like, yeah. are they really coming there and I'm part of them because we're there or <clears throat> would that be the same amount of work in Vegas? I don't know. I think you're right though. Having Vegas, like the strip right there and just Vegas being what it is and everyone knows it for, mm -hmm. sure, you're gonna probably entice, it's like, oh yeah, you could do that too and do Graham's thing. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah, it's just easy. Yeah. I think it yeah. would be fun to discuss why you're here today and how we met because what happened what, yesterday? Was it two days ago? Uh, two days oh, ago. Yes, two days ago. I, I have a question ago. for you guys. Yeah. So yeah, um, two days ago, I won $120,000 on a table tennis, <laughs> <laughs> a table tennis tournament, <laughs> which is, uh, I looked up, I was asking some of the Olympians there. I was like, wait, how much is a regular like table tennis prize purse? Yeah. And they were like, maybe 60, 70,000. <sighs> Uh, no at way. like the high end ones. And I was like, no way. you're telling me this is like the most, Double. of course it'd be a YouTuber that maybe, right. you know, um, but okay. What do I do with the 120,000? Not what do I do, but so what, what I wanted, how do I invest yeah. it to grow it? And then I want to go back with Eric and like do some sort of giveaway, uh, eventually or like figure out some, I want to one, take time to figure out what to do. <clears throat> that's yeah. clever. Um, but investment wise, what do I do with the money in the I'm meantime? Curious, where are you investing right now? Like what's what's your portfolio kind of look like? Uh, I'm like 70% real estate, 20% okay. stocks, 10% cash reserves waiting to buy. Got no it. crypto? Uh, well, in, in sorry, my stocks, yes, there's crypto in there. All right, so of the 70% real estate, how much of that is rental versus business versus primary? Uh, almost all of it's rental. Oh, good. Yeah. What about your primary? Do you own like that? my personal? Yeah. Uh, I have a mortgage on it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of the stocks, is that index funds or it's uh seventy five. It's seventy percent stocks, fifteen percent ETF, fifteen percent crypto. I think I did the math on that wrong, but it's uh I know fifteen on crypto is correct, fifteen on ETF is correct. So overall, then if it, so, it's. I'm trying to calculate what's your crypto total in relation to everything else. Like what percentage? Oh, That's got to be like two percent. Uh, yeah, two percent. Yeah, not even. May, yeah, maybe like one eight. 
I would, I would, I think it would be fun to put it in crypto. All crypto. That's what yeah. I'm leaning towards. I, yeah, because I think that if you have a long enough time horizon, let, let's say 15 to 20 years, I, I don't know if anything's going to happen in the short term. Huh. And that, that's why I say like 10, 15 years, probably 10 years. Let's yeah. just say that. I, I think it's going to do well, but it's also small enough in relation to everything else where if it goes to zero, mm -hmm. it's not going to be the end of the world right. anyway. I don't know. To me, I'd, I'd probably do 60 Bitcoin, 60 Ethereum. It's just a one-time thing and Leave for, it. forget Set about it. it. Just forget about Stake it. Stake it somewhere. But didn't you forget say you it. wanted to do something with Arak with the 120 grand? I do. Yeah, so I that would be. I probably would not then yeah. put it in crypto. Like, I don't even know. But like, you could always, depending well, on your time I mean, horizon the, on that. The you chance always, of it going to zero, I mean, like, it's. I don't think it's going to go to zero. I think zero, but, your worst but if you're case is probably. It and, but but I also think, yeah. I also don't think I would just do it all in one thing. Like, I think I would take my time and do. It doesn't have to come from that. It could be, if you invest 120, you could pull on 120 from somewhere else. McCash so you're just there. asking how he would invest 120 <laughs> yeah but not necessarily the 120 grand he got there, yeah so. i mean if you're doing it for the well, purpose I mean, mentally of like, yes that's where from where it's you know from in that moment but yeah it's gonna be so let's just say you have 120 later. grand to invest <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes okay and he could spend 120k <laughs> on something else giving it back not that you got a windfall no no no. it's just having 120 i would have fun it. with that okay crypt go crypto Sure. Even it, but it depends on play like safe you want to play it. I think you have enough to fall back on where it doesn't matter and you could you could make a riskier allocation with it with a small So what's the are you in crypto? Yeah. How much? How much how much percent percent? percent? Uh nearly ten. Okay. So would you have recommendations for what which crypto? I have okay, so <laughs> like I have if someone Jack drops you like, someone coin. drops you 120 yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you put it in? If I were to do cryptos, I would probably do I would probably do 45% Bitcoin, 45% 40, Ethereum, and then 10% just like maybe something like altcoins. Which altcoins? I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't found them yet. Yeah. <laughs> Elon, Elon, Elon balls. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, Solana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marty and some Solana. I do. Yeah. I, I'm excited about that one. Yeah. Cardano. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Or that mm -hmm. would be, yeah, yeah, it would be interesting. Just some random stuff yeah. that could pop off, yeah. probably. Yeah, I don't think you could go wrong with that. I and mean, maybe you could. Maybe we could look back at this, but I yeah, don't that, know. That's not financial I, advice, you guys. Right, but, no, I just, God, no, but I it's think, interesting. I don't honestly, think you can go wrong with it. <laughs> you'll definitely not lose money on that. <laughs> but no, but it's interesting, at least for me with Bitcoin and Ethereum, the more research I do, the more excited I get about it. Yeah. And I, I've never had that with any other investment where like, usually the more you research, you reach a point where like, all right, I think I understand it enough. I'm not exactly sure anything mm -hmm. can happen. But it's, I see such a big potential. And what's really interesting to me is that uh, the more I see that millennials and Gen Z are choosing crypto over stocks and there's like this mental shift of like, oh, stocks are for boomers and old people and I'm not going to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's odd, what's odd is that a lot of millennials feel like the stock market is, is more corrupt and more manipulated than cryptocurrency yeah, is, right. even though I think right now cryptocurrency is way easy, uh, way more easily manipulated oh, there's like, I, by like probably I, tenfold. I don't know what your guys view on this, but like I feel like YouTubers are moving some of these coins. They can't. Oh, like massively. Certainly. Certainly, they can it just like, pump and dump stuff. Like it, de it depends on the cryptocurrency, the market cap, the context, and if they are actually behind it. Hmm. Um, so I, I think, if anything, probably Twitter has just as large of an impact because yeah. it seems like a lot of this tends to start on Twitter. Or usually, what, what actually what 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 I've seen behind the scenes is that it seems to like the Discord groups, which then I'll talk about it, and then it goes to Twitter, and it'll go from Twitter to YouTube, yep. and then. Like then, then the big mainstream outlets start to pick up on it, like the CNBCs and the CNNs and the market watches, and they'll do things on. It. But I don't know. But I think there's a new type of investing right now that's based on momentum, community, and attention, and and it's you can't you can't value that. Yeah. Like GameStop was a perfect example of that, where it's like the the community came together, all really like the stock, and it's still trading at like a, over two hundred dollars. Yeah. GameStop it's crazy doesn't make any sense. And a year and a half ago. Not even, was it a year? No, yeah, a year and a half ago, it was like $6 a share. Not that much, I mean, not. I don't wanna say not that much happened, but it's from $5 to 200 yeah. in a year and a half, but it's the community that's so strong behind it. And uh, Sam, I think also plays with Tesla, is that it's such like this um, this cult-like following for Elon Musk. Is it worth any? Oh, I don't know, but the community and the momentum says it is. Yeah. And so how long could that continue? And what, what price do you value that on? So mm -hmm. I think with a lot of these coins, um, I don't know, long term, who knows what's going to happen. But with uh, Dogecoin, it's like, it's a stupid coin. It, it's it's a me literally, I mean, it's, not it's stupid. 
Okay. I'm still hold, hold my still, dirt. careful. Watch your mouth. Yeah, I should. Uh, I should educate myself. But <laughs> it's a silly coin. I mean, it's silly. It's silly. Nobody could buy into it and say it's not. It's it's a silly right. coin. They started it off as a joke, but now it's got a market cap of thirty billion dollars. I think it would be fun to discuss some of the content creation process because. For some reason, you have some ability to just go viral on yeah. every single like form of social media ever. And I don't understand it That's because you've magic, also gone yeah. mainstream. Uh, you were on uh, Ellen DeGeneres and yeah. you were on, like you said, The Amazing Race. You've been in a movie. I saw that. Zootopia is in my, in my IMDb. I don't even know how to do my IMDb, but uh, Zootopia is listed. You're on Zootopia. Because I have one voice cameo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which they gave me. Gosh. Uh, when the first time you go in the police scene, you can hear me saying like, I, he bore his teeth first. It wasn't me. That's but that's um a, yeah, you've done everything well. TV okay. shows too. Here, Gosh, here's here's yeah. my thing. Uh, I go to a lot of different conferences and, and speak at them, and also attend where uh, YouTubers they always try to break down, which is fine, the algorithm and figure out like what is the best SEO. You know, year couple. Remember a couple years ago, it was like really with thumbnails, right? Like mm -hmm. red circles, like figure out what the you know kind of the Jake Paul days. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, okay, thumbnails is the new thing, and then. Um, but instead of reverse engineering the, the algorithm, which I think is important, the one metric today I think creators should be watching is retention because um, that will drive up the suggested viewers. But for me, it's always, I mean, I'm looking at from the long tail of like doing this for 12 years. I think it's about the only thing is the stories and the content and the characters in your videos and you know building that relationship with your audience doesn't matter what platform you're on. I think YouTube's a really, really strong one. Like I would bank most if it was a, you know, well, it is a stock, but if it was a, a tradable platform, just if you had platforms, uh, I would put most of my money on YouTube being the front runner still for a long time because you can build a whole ancillary, you know, right, a bunch right, of businesses right. around it. But that doesn't mean you don't need other ones to help build your brand. I think Instagram and TikTok, especially TikTok lately has been great. What I noticed is, um, YouTube, you have a core audience, right? They just come back, they watch your videos, and if you keep making great stuff, they'll continue to come back and it'll kind of grow over time slowly. But I, you need the TikToks and the Instagrams, or you don't need them, but they're really helpful for branding and sometimes uh, mainstream. Like with TikTok, we found like more people come up to me now versus like a lot of people still came up to me on YouTube, but way more come up based on TikTok. And you could just see that in throughout the years, like, when it was Vine people coming oh up gosh. or when it was Instagram blew up, you know, or when it was Snapchat even, you could see these waves and you could tell because when people were taking selfies, you can see what, what apps they're on and how they're doing it. And it was pretty obvious where they're coming from where they'll just say like, oh, I saw this TikTok, you know, mm. or they call you that. So my title has changed so many times over the last 12 years. It was, you know, um, at one point it was like, you're a Musical.ly star. Oh I know you gosh. from Musical.ly, you know, um, but like those platforms are all helpful for kind of breaking into the mainstream. It's weird though. Like, I I wonder when we're gonna stop using the word mainstream because YouTube is mainstream. I like, know, like right? why yeah. are we still calling it? I don't know. YouTube creators, that's yeah. that's fine. But like, eventually, it's just like, oh, I watch this person. Right, right. You know, like I feel like I watch. If you're talking about Dave Ramsey, like you yeah. watch him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Like he's a right. YouTuber. Uh, not in the traditional sense, but it's like we're all watching on the same mm -hmm. place at this right. point. That's I'm, interesting that you've paid attention to the, I don't want to say the back end, but like the metrics of the video itself. Because for us, it's always title thumbnail. That we could have the most amazing video in the world. And if we don't have the right title and thumbnail, nobody watches it. Yeah. And I've had it so many times where I've posted a video and it's been a 10 out of 10, which means it's like the worst video we've posted out of the last 10. Okay. And the video itself is awesome. And all we do is change the title and the thumbnail to something a little more. When do you do that? In the first, first like, hour. Oh, if, what if you don't do it in the first hour? Uh, it has less of an effect. Okay. I've noticed at least in the first hour, YouTube is recommending the video enough to get immediate feedback on the video. So, so when you post, are you just waiting, like kind of watching yeah. Oh, yeah. it, and, and in the first hour you're ready to pivot or do you already have no, other thumbnails ready? So, uh, so the way it works is that we post and usually I don't look at any of the metrics for the first 15 minutes. Okay. Sometimes it's like things could happen in the first five or 10. Yep. Uh, usually though, after about 10 minutes, you could kind of tell, but 15 minutes in, we look at what the initial click-through rate was yep. of the title. So we could see on the on the analytics, if you get a big spike the first minute, past a certain like number, like for us, it's past 1,500. Hmm. Uh, anything above 1,500, we know the title's correct because okay. enough people clicked on uh, in the first minute. Yep. Then we see, 
what is the momentum like those next 15 minutes? Is the graph going up? Is it going down? And how does that do to, in relation to every other video we've posted? Yeah. And at this point, we have a backlog of probably two to 300 videos mentally in our minds that we could compare it to. And we're like, this is our usual. This is good. This is bad. Yep. These topics do good and these topics do poorly. Sometimes we'll post a video and we will know it's going to be like a nine, yeah. which means it's not the worst, but it's pretty bad. And are those ones ones like we have a lot in our library yeah. that randomly sometimes years later just blow up out of nowhere. Do you guys have that? No, in your, so not that really. It, no, the videos that, that do well long term are long tail videos. So like we'll say how to invest in the stock market for beginners. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 100 percent. I'll post that video. It'll do terribly. It'll be my worst performing video in the first like two months. But those videos get such consistent views that within about six months, it'll be one of the top performing videos. Yeah. Uh, so you can't do that all the time, but those videos are great as like, uh, th those are kind of like you're building out a spider web to yep. collect like new subscribers right. and viewers. And that'll just consistently get like new flies in there. Yeah. Just made that up. But those videos are really well, um, just those provide the foundation because they always get views. Yeah. So if you could get a hundred of those in the pipeline every day, each of those will make, you know, a few bucks. Yeah. So that's like, that's your foundation. And then everything else is, you know, just entertainment along See, the way. See, we, yeah, we don't even... I don't even know what my title click through rate is because for us, like I'm not trying to SEO. So we have, for example, a video that's incredibly, I think it's got a hundred million views on our YouTube channel. It's called furniture illusions. The most random topic of all things, right? Like not many people are looking up illusions in the first, I mean, there's a lot, but relative to other things. Um, and then furniture, like that's a pretty low search thing, but that randomly, takes off not you know the first week not even the first two weeks it was like months later and a lot of our videos do that it seems to be it somehow goes into the algorithm at some point and it says like oh and this is where i think retention is really important um it knows that it's getting a higher watch time and but it's weird that our videos are like could be months later That's, yeah so for us the content creation isn't about like title or thumbnail it really is like the step above that which is what is this video is about what like what's interesting about this yeah, you know, I think victim. every channel has a slightly different algorithm, it seems like. Maybe. And mine is going to be different than yours. Yeah. Because I've seen some other channels, too. Uh, it was interesting. We were talking to the Stradman a while ago, and each of his videos consistently will hit between 1 and 1.2 million views. Mm. No matter what he does, he could post a bad video, a million views. Huh. A great video, 1.2 million views. It's always within that range, no matter what he does. Huh. And it's interesting that like that's his baseline. Like YouTube sets that as his recommendations regardless of how much the subscribers grow yeah it's like that's his that's his thing and for us we have a certain range that like almost no matter what video we post as long as it's you know on par it's gonna do you know a certain amount of views what about on the ice is the ice coffee hour different like have you seen different metrics you guys do the same thing like you look at it's the title very something. similar a few videos end up getting recommended uh we had one with Jeanette McCurdy it did really well. And at first, it, it was a good video at first, but I think it just, it hit her audience. Or it was the same time that, what was it, I, the iCarly thing came out. Yeah, we had mm. her on us. That yeah, was just, the reboot was coming yeah. out. Yeah, okay. so we had her on and posted what was by the, coincidence at the same time that yeah. her iCarly reboot. So you got a reboot. bunch of surge terms. Yes, yeah. mm. and then I think YouTube saw that that video was being searched, people were watching it and started recommending to that audience. Yeah. So every now and then we, we hit what a vein. It also happened yeah. with the King Pokemon thing. Like I remember we, we released, you know, King Pokemon. Yep. We released a, an episode with him and immediately it was like a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. so bad. Like really, yeah. really and poor then performer. What? And then it was like, I think it was about six days after yeah. he posted. I remember I was at a spike ball tournament and all of a the sudden there was a huge bump in the views and Graham texted me, he's like, dude, look what's happening. Yeah. And I looked. What was it? Uh, like after like uh, what, what was it a news thing that no, happened no no it was just oh, it yeah. hit the audience huh, that yeah. likes the pokemon content oh, like his fan base and everything and we didn't change title we didn't nope, change nothing. thumbnail literally and all of a sudden every single day just got more and more and yeah. more views and then it was a one out of ten by far yeah wow. yeah we have yeah. certain videos where i feel like youtube is really youtube wants the video to succeed yeah and i really believe that they're trying to find it they're trying scrambling to a b test different audiences yeah and if it could test and then this is successful and it test that success it finds like the right person for the video and then it's like if this person liked this video we're going to recommend it to other people who've it's also like, watched we got them yeah exactly lock, lock it so, in so like a good example too was uh, i did a video with michael reeves and i was yeah. so excited for this video and i thought for sure this would be like a knockout video it was a it's a 10, 10 out of 10. By yeah. far. Mm. I mean, it was half, it did half the views of the next worst performing video, half. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, crap. I guess this isn't going to work anymore. Yep. And then it, I think it was like three days later, same thing is boom. And it, and it hit 
Michael Reeves audience and sort of recommending to people who watch Michael Reeves. Yep. And so, so it's just, it's interesting I I how that, that works. Video. But, That's the video where, uh, yeah, I watched that one. He talks about Simon property. You're like, what do you invest yeah. in? He's like, Simon, yeah. Simon property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But look, yeah, he, that did well. Dude, it did well. Yeah. Yeah. Every wasn't time I see Tesla that stock, too? I think of him because of that. I'm like, yeah. I hope he's still in that. I thought it was Tesla too. Wasn't it Tesla? No, I, I no, think it was literally, he said it was only Simon property. Yeah. He was like, all he had. <laughs> it's kind of a random one to <laughs> even know about. <laughs> yeah, was he in it for the dividends or something? I think it was. Didn't he say his friend told him or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he just went all in. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. It worked. Yeah. They're doing well. I like Simon Property. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have. I I got it because of that actually. <laughs> no. So across all of your yeah. different like social media platforms, uh, do you is your goal to like redirect everything to YouTube? And it's, it's, not an, it's not an intentional goal, but yeah. I do like that because that's where we grow the real community. Like mm -hmm. the people who really care about our work and even it attracts more of a filmmaker uh, to the channel. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of my vibe and my MO. So ideally that's where people go. And it's just right. long for, I really think sitting down with your favorite creator and spending six minutes in a video is way, way more powerful than having, you know, 60 million people watch it for like 15 seconds. Even like if just, it doesn't, I don't know, they're swiping onto the next thing right. on most of their platform. Well, they don't even like individually select to watch your content on TikTok. It just gets recommended if they're just going through their feed, which is how everyone right. searches. But on YouTube, if you're gonna click on like, like someone's channel or a recommendation or something like that, you actually have to actively click on it. Yeah. So I feel like that also can establish a different relationship with the uh, with yeah. the viewer as well. But have you also noticed that there is there are different viewers on each platform? Like your fans are different on this platform yes. or is it kind of like cross hash? You no, know, it's interesting. Like they don't, like a lot of people, I mean, makes sense because we are most, our followers are on Instagram or TikTok mm -hmm. or um, other platforms. Not many people know we have a YouTube channel. Like they're usually mm -hmm. pretty shocked and like, what? And I'm always like, but you seem like a pretty in-depth fan, but you don't know we have a YouTube channel. It's just a lot of people are either, I think this is depends on how you use social media. Like my wife is only on Instagram. She doesn't really watch many YouTubers. She kind of just know, again, like the people she follows do minutes of stories or like they could do eight minutes of stories a day, right? So mm -hmm. she's kind of watching a version of it mm -hmm. chopped up. Um, so it's just, it's different I think. Uh, based on how view it's it's really weird to me though even in Vegas like be, meeting people in the strip they're like dude i am the biggest fan of your tiktok videos and i was like oh my did gosh, you watch our funny. youtube videos and they're like what oh you wow. have a youtube channel like what's different there and that i think that's the thing though you have to if you have if you're drawing people to it it has to be really different so for us it's like we're still really only a year into redeveloping the youtube channel like at the for many years, it's just, mm -hmm. we, we have like 10 or what, 12 million subscribers on YouTube, yeah. but most of them are because we ran them. We didn't know we had a channel for a long time. We were uploading the shorts, uh, not as short, not YouTube shorts, but like the short little clips. Yeah. And we were just putting them, I was just uploading them when I'd make a new one, same as I'd put them on Instagram and TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then we looked one day and we're like, holy crap, this channel's like actually growing. We need to make long form content, which is one reason I think the CPM isn't good because yeah. we've kind of just started figuring out in the last, yeah year and a half, like we need to do longer form. Like if you do look at the library of from years ago, it's all like 20 second videos That's why. and the watch time is just like, it's been pulled down because I'm thinking about like, maybe I need to go through and YouTube says it's not uh, worth doing or doesn't affect it, but I feel like it does. Like I need to go dele what? delete no. those. No, 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 no. Don't, don't delete, delete videos. That, that's the worst bad. thing. Why is that bad? bad. Oh my God. We heard a... from Todd Bupro himself that deleting videos is bad. Okay. Who do yeah. we hear from? I heard it from Todd B. Pro. I asked him uh, in Clubhouse back in the olden days uh, when we used to use that. And he said basically- Old days like a month ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, no, this is like six months ago. Okay, but the months. algorithm. I, yeah, yeah, Todd B. Pro, who's like the head of the algorithm at YouTube, you know? Okay. Uh, he said that once you delete a YouTube video, like YouTube collects- Does it mess up the web or something? Yeah, kind of. YouTube collects data based off of the viewer. It's not based off of the video. Mm. And basically, if you delete a video, YouTube will treat- each viewer that saw that video as if they had never seen that video or interacted with that video. So Meaning if a viewer, or your channel, so. No, just, just that video, which obviously is tied to your channel. Yeah. So like, let's say like you have like 10 viewers that went and watched this one video of yours and they liked it or something. Then YouTube's gonna be like, oh, these 10 viewers, they're gonna probably wanna see other content similar to this. And they're gonna recommend other of your videos to this to these people, right? right. But if you delete that one video, that is the ch that is the vessel between like you and the viewers. So it's a pool. And it literally just, it basically yeah. treats it as as though they had never seen that video or they've never interacted. So by with your deleting, channel. let's say, I mean, I might have a lot. I have to look, but like, 
it could be like two or three hundred oh, short. Oh gosh, now you'll screw just videos. leave it. Yeah, no, leave it. We have, I we've tested this so many times in our channel that mm. we never delete videos anymore. I remember this. So I ended up Do deleting. You was it, what about unlisting? No. No, we literally go into the YouTube. Yeah, well, edit. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Oh, okay. So, right. so here's what happened oh, on my main channel. Tips. I was four months into doing YouTube videos, and my channel started getting recommended, and I ended up taking down two of those videos because they were videos that I just like back when I started. Were you embarrassed so, by them? No, I was. I swore. I oh, swore okay. in those videos, and yeah. I really tried to clean up some of the. I just made like stupid jokes yeah. in the video. Not, not, not nothing inappropriate. Well. I would say it's like it's not going to cancel. It's not going to cancel. No, it was, no, no, it was no, inappropriate. No. Well, yeah, it, it's not cancelable. It's not cancelable. But it's People just are now googling. They're, just, leaving, they're leaving the podcast. It's inappropriate toilet it. humor uh -huh. that a like a teenage boy w would joke about. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you think of it's stuff just, like okay, so like, it's immature like adult and, swim sort of humor that I was making in videos talking about how to make passive income. Yeah. that was it. I mean, it's innocent enough. But when I but when those videos, I never thought anybody would watch the videos. Yep. And then when people watched the videos, and I and I was still I was full time as a real estate agent. I didn't want those videos coming back and clients thinking I was not professional. Sure, talking about like making these stupid jokes. Oh, so you were working? At, I mean, you were a real estate agent at the time. Oh yeah, right. I was full time real yeah. estate agent. Like I wasn't making money from YouTube. I, like that was just a side for fun. So you haven't hobby. sworn on the channel since then. No. So so, so basically, so I took down those videos. It. Because I was like, I don't want clients to see this. I want a professional image still. So I'm going to take down those videos and not swear anymore. Yep. As soon as I took down those videos, there's like two of them. My channel just like 80% drop off. Huh. Like almost immediately. Really? And it took me months. It took me like eight months to build yeah, back you up. Swear, you just, you swear it's from that. And it was from that. Wow. It was instantaneously. I took down those videos. Eight months to build back up that same momentum. Eight yeah. months. And then there was another time where I deleted a video, the same thing happened. Um, yeah, it was it was another it was another video. I think I just took it down. Um, same thing happened. Mm. The algorithm went down. It took a few months to get back. But the real test was on the second channel. We had a guy call in. Um, I guess we could talk about it. It's been long enough. We, I won't reveal anything. But we had a guy call in who owned a franchise, okay. and he was telling us all the details about this franchise and like how much he was making from the franchise, how you could own a franchise, like the inner workings, which was really interesting because it was this whole culture and nothing bad. It was just it like was public information. It, yeah, kind it, of. No, it was. He said it was public information. Okay. Well, it was anyway, just the board that got he upset. revealed too much information for him and the board saw the video, which oh, I don't know no. how they saw the video. It must have gotten recommended or someone sent it to him or something like that. It was That's a great good. video and it was one of our most successful videos on the second channel. And he called and was like, hey, I'm really sorry. I don't want to do this, but like I'm it, this is going to impact my ability to open up another franchise wow. unless this video comes down. Mm. Like, all right, we're going to take the video down. So we took it down and instantly the whole channel, how many tanked. months did it? Yeah. The oh, channel it was tanked. probably like, it was probably like four months. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not deleting Don't anything. Do Don't do it. Yeah. Do so anything. what we do instead, what we found a good workaround. <laughs> so we had another person call in on the second channel and uh, she said some things that she later regretted saying. And so she asked us. Trim them out. Uh, yes. So basically, well, the entire premise of the video was all centered around something that she did not want. That she later regretted. On the dude, internet. you people just need to sign a paper that says like, yes. I know that I'm going to say things I don't do regret. That. Yeah. But basically, right. what we did was we went to the YouTube editor uh -huh. and made the entire video just an intro. Yeah. So it's, so it's literally, what's up, you guys? It's Graham here, and, and then, welcome back to the second channel. And then with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Everything. Yeah. You so literally it's, chopped it's a, out. Yes. Like what, an hour a, and a half of something yep. in the middle? No, it was no, no it was uh, it was probably yeah, 15, oh, okay. 20 minutes. But yeah. all it is is it's thirty Are seconds. People now there's, watching that like what? No, there's no th it. yeah, so there's no changed, thumbnail. We changed the title thumbnail so it's unsearchable. Yeah, and the, I think we just no. The title like is outro dot mov yeah. or something yes. like that. It's literally <laughs> so. People be like, oh, he accidentally but, uploaded this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. that means all the data is retained in that video. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. and then, and then we hid comments so yeah, people we, wouldn't be able it's to tell everything the is because the comments revealed what the video is yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So and it worked, and we didn't and suffer fine. any yeah. like you know. There was also another change. How is the YouTube uh, trimmer? Oh, it's it's, it's challenging. It's it's, it's very confusing. Like you, get like it down, you can't get it, it down to the frame, right? You're just no, kind of like no, 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 no. Yeah, but there was another video too. We did a, a house tour, and uh, the lady was all fine with us using it. I'm not gonna ask you to delete the video. And then apparently the person who was buying the house was a, a high, high profile person. They wanted the video down, right? And she's like, "You got to take the video down." I I, ref I refused. Because this video took a long time to make and it was going to throw off the algorithm and the channel was on upswing. So I said, how about this? We'll keep the video up, but I'll change the title and thumbnail to make it unsearchable. She's like, that's fine as long as nobody could see it. I'm like, nobody's going to find it. So I hid this video basically. It doesn't mm -hmm. show up in search anymore. You have to scroll back like 
two years to find it. You're yeah. not, nobody's going to find it. Yeah. But anyway, it's a uh, very interesting. Okay. Those are the tricks. Yeah. So just, but it works. In short, don't delete any of the videos. Yeah. Don't. If, 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 yeah. But there's no point if, unless, unless there's something on there that you don't want up there anymore, there's no point in changing title and stuff like that. Unless you have to delete a video, in which case just edit it out. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good tip to know. Yeah. Try that. So we've learned everything just through trial and error, yeah. seeing what works. And we're just like, Anything with the algorithm, we watch it. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So does it affect it. your content though? At the end of the day, do you go back to the? Does it affect writing the next one? Um, yes and no, but I'm I'm vigilant on how user interaction is going to go throughout the video, and I'm really cognizant of like, are people going to continue watching? So like every minute and a half, there's a hook. Yeah. And I change the scenes on purpose because yeah. I notice if I'm just at a desk talking boring so every two minutes or so what's your guys's yeah. retention do you know the number uh, 50 to 60 oh that's pretty that's yeah. really good so it's average view time is seven to eight minutes this to family is like we can get up to like 75 percent on this to family yeah. Whoa. but the second channel and the main channel is 50 to 60 percent yeah wow it's high so yeah. for finance but that's because i liked I, I, i'll so what i do is i'll script out the video and then i read it back to myself yep. and if there's any point where i'm reading where it doesn't make sense or hmm. it, I, I lose my own focus I'll either cut it out or I'll put a hook in there yeah. or a question. I think that's important. As long yeah. as the going to the analytics and the data is yeah, changing yeah. positively oh, yeah. the content, then yeah. that's great. Well, at the end of the day, it's just about keeping retention and entertainment at the same time. So if, yeah. if, if someone's not entertained, there's no point in watching my video. Yeah. So I would say, It's yeah. like that mix. I mean, for you guys, it's probably entertainment, but it's also highly on value, right? Like yeah. if you're not providing value and you're just entertaining, like unless that's why we're going to watch the channel, then you're missing the mark. It has to be, so, it has to be a mix of both. Yeah. But so that's awesome. So Zach King, if you could rank the least important to the most important form of social media to have a presence on, how would you rank it? If you don't have a presence on YouTube, you won't be able to survive for the long tail of it. If that, if social media, you're trying to make that your career, mm -hmm. like being a content creator, you have to have YouTube. Um, but it doesn't mean the other ones are important. It, it just means I think if I were to rebuild a channel, I would do it from YouTube as a base and use the others to build it up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I wouldn't have a TikTok channel alone. I wouldn't have an Instagram right. alone. Um, that just doesn't make sense anymore. So they all need each other, but you would say YouTube is the most important, but then what would it go? Would it go like as most important YouTube and then TikTok, then Instagram, oh, yeah. then Snapchat? For, for, like for the order right now is, and it, again, it changes on the climate. Like it feels like, it was moving a lot faster. It's kind of slowed down. I feel like we're in a weird plateau of like no new platforms uh, in mm -hmm. a long time, no new innovation on social media. So yeah, YouTube is your base. Absolutely have to be on TikTok. I don't, are you on TikTok? Are you guys on TikTok? Yeah, we have Ice Coffee Hour clips on TikTok. Yeah, we, it's got like 90,000 followers. At least you're doing clips. my TikTok today. Are you really? Yeah, did you, did right you here. Right here. I want to ask you a question for before TikTok. If oh, you're I wanted we'll to film it. a TikTok with Zach. Well, Great. too late. Great. Zach. You could both. You I could said both. First. No, 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 no. Jack can't do it. Okay. I called it first. Well, wait. I wanted to film a TikTok. Alex gets <laughs> no, a TikTok. No. All right. Fine. Alex gets a TikTok. <laughs> Gosh. All right. So you got you got YouTube, then you got TikTok, and, and then it, but it depends who you are. Like I've seen, I follow a lot of podcasters, and it's like Twitter is some of their. That's the way mm. I find out there's a new podcast. Um, it really depends. And like a news. Journalists, I'm gonna follow them on Twitter. You know, I'm not gonna follow them on uh, Instagram. Yeah. So it, it really I've, depends yeah. what you do. I've seen the biggest engagement from Instagram because for me, like YouTube is 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 good, but then my Instagram is the concentration of the people who really care about the YouTube channel and myself will follow me on Instagram. Yep. So anytime I do it, well, I used to be the swipe ops, but when I used to do the swipe ops, I'd have such a high click through rate that like that would eclipse YouTube by like ten times. So it, it depends how you build it. Like yeah. me, I'm stuck at where I built my Instagram as a so I built every platform as a solo thing. It didn't have mm. a purpose. So like you started as YouTube, and you probably I'm guessing said. And if you want to know more about me and you're really into yes. my stuff, go follow on Instagram. Correct. So those Instagrammers, you're able just to always say, swipe up or go see this yeah, or new video right. here. For me, I built it just on Instagram and they came for the short stuff. And so now if I do anything else, they're like, dude, why am I, why are you sending me to YouTube? Because <laughs> this is where I started following you and this is what Got I want it. to follow. All right, so that makes sense. so it, if, if you don't, you, it's hard to pivot later on those platforms, like what you use it for. What questions do you have for us? Let's okay, I want to know script. about your process. Yeah. I want to sure. know about I, when I hear your uh, recently. It was a uh, uh, you had uh, Jimmy's manager on mm -hmm. and uh, super smart guy. 
you guys, it sounds like there's bandwidth issues. Like you're always like, I'm so busy. So, so bur you're almost burning out. I don't know yep. if you're burning out, but I'm like, from my perspective, it seems like if you had a writer and if you had an editor, I know you have Alex, he's awesome. Yeah. So Alex, my, my goal, January 1st, I want Alex to take over the videos in the, the main channel. So he would edit them. Yep. So like my goal in a perfect world is like after this, I'm going to be filming. Yep. I'm going to film that video. I'm going to be done, let's say 8 p.m. I would love for him to edit at night. Yep. And then that way the next morning we could review the video together and have it done so I could plan out the next video. Alex, you ready for the night shift? I've actually been working my regular job and the night shift for the past couple of weeks. Well, you have another job? No, this is his this, this I mean, okay. the, the night shift is in like I, editing I, videos. Okay. So, yeah. How, how many years have you been doing th this? You five. Should, five years. Yeah. Wow, you've been at, what, what's your schedule? Like, how many hours do you work a week? Uh, usually I try to take weekends, like half days. Yeah. But I would say Monday through Friday is definitely 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. usually. Yeah. Okay, that's Monday through Friday. Saturday is usually a half day, so it could be. I like working morning, so I, I love going yeah. from like 7 a.m. to 12 yeah. on a Saturday or 7 to 3 or whatever. And then Sunday would be maybe another half day or a full day. So I would say within a week, I definitely get at least one full day off. Usually the weekends are both half you days. You know what it is, Graham? You yeah. need to have a kid. No. Once you have no, a kid. No, 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 no. Don't, no, no, don't, don't even. No, Once no, you have no, a kid, no, 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 no. <laughs> priorities just seem to change. Uh, and you realize uh -huh. like all the little things you do, half of them somebody else can do. And it just forces you to do I don't wanna I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna have to have a kid just to just to change up my schedule. I love listen, I love my schedule. I really value the freedom yeah. of being able to work this many hours. Yeah. So I'm no. I'm really not in a rush to So to what get would that. you okay, yeah. if you had more time, what would you do with it? Uh it sounds great. I'd work more. Yeah, you'd work more. But like would, what, yeah. what would the output look like? Is it like your um, goal? Are you trying to like ramp up to like four or five videos a, no a i don't and... really want to ramp up i i want to just continue i don't know if if i had more time honestly i'd probably go to the gym a little bit more yeah um you'd be happier I, yeah yeah honestly i'd probably be a little bit happier okay i would be a little less stressed which is out. important to you you mentioned that earlier be, like, that will yeah. translate into the content yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. true um i probably go to the gym more uh be a little happier and spend more time uh both with macy and with the aquarium mm. I love, the, I love the aquarium. As yeah. you had seen right when you walked yeah, in, like, like that is my, first thing you my see. pride it's and joy. Like, I'd spend more time tinkering on that yeah. <laughs> tank. That's great. So it that's, yeah. So, but part of me would see that as like, ooh, this this means I could work more. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I could do a better job now. Yeah. I would I would just ask what in your process is the your least favorite part? See, it's weird for me because I like editing. For me, it's like, yeah. it's it's a kind way. therapeutic. Yeah, because I, I know I could look at the time and be like, I just zone out. Yeah. And it becomes like this thing where I could do yeah. it with my eyes closed yep. and just the time stops and I look down and be like, oh, the video's done. Yeah. Four hours went by. Great. And I'm really happy with like the way it turned out. And it's perfect. Yeah. I would say the hardest part for me is planning and thinking of a good topic. Because it's mm. hard to, because once you commit to a topic, there's 10 hours right there. Yeah. Between planning and filming. What's your involvement in the main channel? Nothing really. Oh, nothing. He just runs by title thumbnails by me. Sometimes video ideas. Sometimes I watch the videos and give him my opinion on the editing yeah, and stuff like got that. It. Yeah. Cool. Well, it sounds like one role that'd be interesting is a like a producer, like a, and you could start it super low. So it's not like they come in with that title and mm -hmm. you feel like you're having to listen to every suggestion they give, but Maybe it's training another person to bounce those ideas off or or ideas. Believe them. it or not, we got we got a. Should we tell him what's a DGB? <laughs> Should I mention? Oh god, he's like good. fifteen. What's I know. DGB? Okay, <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna include this. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know if we're gonna include this. Uh, we have a subscriber. He's watching this right now. What's up? <laughs> it's all, it's he's awkward. One it's of awkward the most dedicated, loyal, but it's fans. awkward to talk about. Okay, so yes. So DGB has commented first on every single one of my videos for yes. probably what a year and a half or two that years. He is, gets almost. He usually tries almost to get first. like ninety percent. He's the first comment yes. across all the videos, and it got to a point where this was like what five months ago. He started to calculate the rankings of the video within the first five minutes of posting, and I'd post a video, mm -hmm. and within five minutes he'd be like, "I could tell this is going to be a six. I could tell this is going to be a four. Yep. This video is not doing that well. It's probably the title. And we noticed month after month after month, he was correct. Yes. B before we, and we were, we had all the analytics. 
he didn't have access. He was literally just going off the video itself. Yep. And so there was a point where he was right so many times. And uh, he said that like this video I could tell is a seven. And I said, but wait a second, but but the the views are lagging on your side. Right. How could you tell? Because we see the real time, you're seeing what YouTube is showing you. He said, I don't even look at the views anymore. You could tell how well it's doing based on the like ratio of the video. Hmm. I was like, what do you mean the like ratio? He's like, well, if you take your likes in the first five minutes and you multiply that by 10, that's how many views you're getting. And so based on the first five minutes, I created this, this spreadsheet of all of your past videos yep. and I could rank now based on the likes of the video, how well it's doing. Yeah. I was blown away. Turns out he's 15 years old at, at his age. He is more skilled yeah. than I would say that than I am at this, than Jack is at this, or Alex, or any of us, yeah. with fewer pieces of data at his disposal. And he was so good at that, and he and he watches all the videos, and all of our videos, by the way, between me, and Jeremy, Kevin, and Andre, like he knows everything, yeah. and he has for years, that I now trust him to pass by video topics and, and titles and thumbnails by him first, yeah. and he gives better title and thumbnail ideas than, than, right. I, than yeah. I even have. Because he's so in it more than more than I am, which yeah. I didn't think was possible. I really think it is if you can find the right fit and it's a fan that wants to work with you, that will that's like they, they you know, employees there usually is a time in their period of employment with you that they just need that fire and that passion uh, excitement for <clears throat> what you do to carry yeah. them through those like lulls of like, oh, I don't want to do this work or this is the difficult part. Uh, and that's like when a fan is in that role. Uh -huh. That's what carries them. Yeah. What's even What's even crazier is that uh, he noticed, based on the subtleties, that the editing was different. That it was Alex, mm. and and I went through Alex's videos to make it as close to mine as possible. He noticed like the little subtle changes in editing. Yeah. It's like, is that yeah. Alex? Yeah, yeah. So it's very cool. Yeah, I would try to find ways <clears throat> to outsource. Again, like you want to do it in a way like a producer is a great role for it if it can encompass maybe that title means for you. They do some of the writing. They do a lot of the research or topics, and they're well versed in that. And then they help you just do the logistics of like maybe it's coordinating a guest, other things that might not seem like they take time, but actually kind of do. Alex, we're gonna call you a producer now. How's that? Uh, does that come title. with but a, I, I, a hey, pay I get, raise? Hey, or, let's or, not. Or, or, I get hey, nervous. Hey, let's not, uh, yeah. I get nervous of the night shift stuff yeah. though. Why? We used to do it a good amount. Um, because of the same reason, hey, we want to see this at in the morning, and we would have U.S. people do it, but that doesn't last super long. Like there, physically, there's only like a certain amount of time. Like my mom's a nurse, and she used to do a night shift for many years, and it just literally can see it physically change your body over time. So mm. it's let you're gonna at some point that person's probably gonna say no, or just mentally not be able. Well, to. it would be Alex. So Alex, what do you think of that? That's a great question. I mean, there was one day I came in here uh, just because the edit went longer than I expected. Uh, Graham and I reviewed and then I went home and I was like, Graham, I need to go get some sleep. Um, so I don't think that editing videos on the night shift is sustainable forever. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that it's necessary, especially with a quick turnaround time. So I think as long as it's not the, op, the you know, the route that you go every night, but let's say, you know, 10 25 percent of the time that's what needs to happen long term i think that would be fun. yeah it's it's tough because there there are some times where it's tuesday night and i finish filming at 8 p.m and that video needs to post the next day at, yeah. at 3 30 without fail it has right. to post and we have to have enough time well, to i would just make it, it I, I don't think the night shift thing so i think the, the issue is that he has a day job plus he's doing a night shift. well oh. no, no 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 well this this would this would oh turn into this would turn into yeah. just that so he, yeah so he could sleep in until 12 if yeah. he wants to as long as the video is done yeah th this would be uh after training after Colin. training yes. yeah, yeah. He's, he's in the uh the training p phase right now yeah the hazing but the goal is that either <laughs> you ideally not you but alex yeah. then trains two more people to do it that maybe not full time, I don't want to scare you on payroll stuff, but they could be freelancers, they could be uh, maybe part time that you know you have X person from Monday to Wednesday. If video gets shot during that time, it needs to be the night shift or whatever you want to do, and then another person for Wednesday through Friday or through the weekend or whenever mm -hmm. um, that you just book their time and you know, yeah, this is my schedule because you know your schedule, right? When you're sometimes no. when you're shooting though, when I'm by the time I'm filming, but sometimes that could be last minute, okay, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, we do all our shoots on a Wednesday and Friday, pretty much 
without fail. Oh um, yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, and so, but yeah. if there is a rhythm, why is it because it's new? It's yeah, yeah. Newsy? I would say probably 80, 75% of the content is on current events, Yeah, where if I miss it by 24 hours, it's, it's irrelevant over. anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so hard, I can't compete with Meet Kevin. Mm -hmm. And there are some some videos that I know he'll get out of video within 30 minutes. He's faster than CNBC now. Right. Uh, because as soon as he sees something, he has better thoughts because he knows the market that he could explain everything. Yeah. 30 minutes. And usually after that, if Kevin does a better job than I would be able to do on a video, yeah. I won't even make it anymore. Because yeah. I'm like, what's the point? Kevin just did a better job. That if, yeah. if I can at it's least- It's the feeling where you get depressed. Same. You're just like, why am I even doing this? Yeah, well, it, the thing <laughs> is, I know if, if I can't at least keep up to that caliber or yeah. do better, I'm not gonna do it if someone else has already done it. See, I actually yeah. disagree with that though. Yeah, really? Yes, because your followers, I don't think it's like, I follow a group of you but I think there's some people who definitely follow just you. There's yeah, definitely yeah, people who follow just Kevin. And it's also styles. Like you look at news anchors, like there's some people I don't like listening to. It could be a tone of a voice. It could be the way they talk. It could be the way they present their viewpoint. Like you still are adding your viewpoint to that thing. So I don't know. That's if, true. I don't think it's yeah. like one person gets to cover it and they yeah. each it to it. Some, like, yeah, some of it though, it really does become outdated after a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once everyone covers it, people lose interest. Well, hey, it's I mean, only, that's a yeah. question. Is that worth yeah. doing all yes. those? Is it oh, yeah, yeah. for those topics? Yes, because usually those are the best performing videos mm. for 24 to 48 hours, and it keeps up that momentum. So it's just another thing to throw, another cog in the wheel. You throw it in there, it does exceptionally well. It's not gonna long tail at all, but pe that, that keeps people coming back. Yeah. Why are you not doing shorts? Well, because I'm wearing jeans right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you, but, uh, don't, you don't like you don't like short <laughs> no form content or well, what don't. is it about like making um, it watching it, it it's it's for me it's the um it's, it I would feel take like time out of your day yes. and all you want to focus on is pumping out the next video on the main channel yeah the, the main channel is my pro if anything is taking away from the main channel it's just not worth my mental okay. stress or just, I'm just thinking gonna, of another i'm gonna thing. give you a hypothetical um you hired a producer uh, i'll let you you pick in sure. your mind, your salary that you pay them, whatever, take deduct that. You have this producer and their job is just TikToks, a short form content for you. Mm -hmm. And they run the your TikTok or whatever, you're gonna make a, maybe a Reels channel, uh, maybe it's, and then shorts, separate channels. Uh, and if in, in, um, if in two years that was able to generate a million dollar additional revenue opportunity for you, is that worth doing? Yeah, how do you come to a million dollars? Um, it would come in the form of eventually, I mean, right now there's like funds, right? Yeah, sure. So those aren't going to pay out or, but over time I would imagine there, there's going to be a battle over creators and their content. And, uh, so you have a little bit of either the funds grow. You also have monetization and ads figured out at that point. And I imagine if you're doing sponsorship deals, you would have other short form sponsorship deals you could do. Yeah. Um, so that's how I'd come to that valuation. I don't know. Honestly, if it, if it takes away from the main channel or stresses me out anymore, like I feel like at this point, I'm like, I, I like I could only retain so much of my head, hmm. and right now I'm at like ninety five percent capacity. That's why. I'm, that's why. That's I'm why saying he's a producer. Delicate. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm saying producer who yeah. literally comes in. And it's like it could be a little sharky, but it's like, hey, this is my goals for these channels. This is my goals for your job. If you don't do it. Sorry, you're out because I have no capacity to either train you. Like, just hang around, yeah. follow me. You figure out the content, and because there are people who do that um, and are great. Yeah, at but it. it's but it's even committing an extra hour a day to filming something. Uh, maybe or, not yeah. though. It's like okay, that yeah, person would sure. sit in the corner of the room, listen to our conversation. At the end of it, they would come up to you and and just or you and Jack and spitball like, hey, uh, I think we should grab this one TikTok with with Zach. Um, here's the idea. I think it'd be funny if like we're by the aquarium, whatever, da, 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 and like, can we go shoot it? It's a 15 minute shoot at the end of the interview. And then that's the one piece from the podcast. They watch your edit a few minutes before it goes out, or I don't know your process. It, it sounds like it gets edited overnight. Do you review it in the morning? With Alex, if, I do. With Alex. Usually I'll edit the same day as post. By that point, they've yeah. watched it. And when you're at, right after you're reviewing with Alex, they grab you for 10 minutes because they understand the concept and they already knew from the day before and they've got a quick like they've written a uh, 15 second version in case uh, I don't have time as a viewer to listen to your video of that I want the quick snippet to almost kind of tease and see if I want to watch it that would go on a short channel but it mm -hmm. actually you know has little value 
I would cons- I would consider it. I don't know. Again, like yeah. the person I'm describing is like fairly high level, or they've done this for another, you know, YouTuber probably or yeah. somebody um, as a content creator. Or they want usually that person wants to be one themselves, but doesn't like rather tap into your audience and just help you do sure. it. Um, and they're a fan of you. That would be yeah interesting. I would cons- I would consider it. But right now, I feel like like really ninety percent of everything I do is the main channel. So like I feel like my time is probably better spent spending that extra hour doing something on the main channel. Part of the million dollar yeah. exposure, or that value I'm giving it in two years, is also the you're accounting for the growth that your channel would get, um, the new eyeballs that would learn about you. Because mm-hmm. again, I'm thinking like this whole thing, even finance YouTube, uh, is so new and early days and you need to be captured like building that real estate basically you know it's like beachfront youtube real estate for you guys right now that yeah. you're like building that exposure and that's the exposure yeah, yeah, part sure. that's like even if they don't know your name it's like oh i've seen him like remember the, the guy that met you he's like oh i've seen your videos actually he, yeah. he didn't think he knew you yeah but like though that's where like when you look at platforms i'm always measuring like oh shoot they're giving like within a swipe you can see all those shorts whether that's here to stay you know who knows but like that's what scare slash fascinates me you know and the reason okay. i'm into shorts also i mean yeah be fair my content is rather short so it kind of works yeah. i but, would i would consider it but i'm afraid of growing too quickly like even bringing on alex was like a huge thing for us like yeah. even even jack for me was was huge yeah and then bring on alex was another huge thing like mentally it's it's tough it's yeah. tough for me so like i would consider it yeah, but it's a it's a big ordeal to bring someone else because then that's just another thing that e- even if they do their own thing, it's just like that's taken my capacity to ninety seven now. Yep. You know? I already have someone that is like they're not even receiving compensation yet for it, but they are now clipping up uh, and posting all the iced coffee hour uh, clips into TikToks. Nice. They have like reels or something ready. Uh, he's clipping up Graham's main channel videos and Graham's apprehensive to post it on his TikTok, but he's open to the idea. And this person's clipping up his main channel videos like yep. into one, uh, you know, the concepts into one, you know, short TikTok or whatever. We yeah. can post it on Graham's TikTok as well. So it wouldn't necessarily require any of Graham's time. Yep. I think the clips are interesting. You can always, unless you're shooting extra wide, it's hard, like viewers yeah. just know. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, something about like seeing a clip, you're like, ah, oh, this is a, yes, someone's I repurposing. Yes. Like that's why I think it really needs to be custom. And that's the stuff that does really well. I agree with like, you on that. It's yeah. just like, they do it on their phone, they shoot it. They but is it, it better right. than nothing? I don't know. Really? I, I, See, I was kind of thinking it's better than nothing, but the ideal would be doing something new. Yeah, yeah it I, is, I would agree. It's <clears throat> maybe better than nothing, but it's, if you're gonna go through that work, like you might as well shoot a few custom pieces. Like we see a difference, like we don't do this anymore, but we don't cut down, like if we shoot a video for TikTok and also shoot it for YouTube, we shoot it twice. Like it's a ton of work, but we'll literally flip the camera and shoot it horizontal and then we'll wow. shoot one vertical because the, the framing matters, like people can tell. That's um, true. The cut down is just always punched Yeah, in I could always tell. And yeah. it doesn't look good. That's really interesting. Yeah, that actually wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't require that much more time if the person already pr- said, hey, this is what we need. It. This is the, these are the video bites that I need yeah. from you or whatever. You could just flip a phone vertically and say That's it. true. Oh. That's really like interesting. Like if I were you guys, I would literally pay somebody to sit here on an iPhone or whatever, DSLR or iPhone, manually just film the interview vertical and like they'd have to really be paying attention. But like when we were going over the, the what's the what's the opener of this gonna be? The cold open? Is it going to be the ranking the like? What do you mean? Are you, talk, are you talking about the, the cold open for like a for TikTok? The, no, or? for the iced coffee. Oh no, so it's going to be it's, Jack and I doing an intro. For yeah, you. we're going to okay. introduce you. Oh well, oh you're not, you don't throw like a little no like an impulsive thing. Yeah, no, we oh. talked about doing. Wait, it. Why you should have you tried it? Uh, we did it uh, a few episodes, probably in like the tenth through fifteenth episode. Oh, we should probably dude, do try that, that again. Yeah. You Let's think so? Yeah, yeah, I think that's I really really important. Uh, I don't well, hold on. We got to have a fake argument for that. Can we no, do like no, a fa- no, no, here, here's no, no, what it no. is. <laughs> no fake argument. Yeah, no. exactly. I don't trust you. Yeah. Yeah. King. Get out of here. No, I don't no. trust you. Those man. ones don't work. Fake arguments don't. But if I showed you like yeah. the reaction you guys had to seeing the shorts the other day, yeah, yeah. when I showed you, it's yeah. that and you're like, no way. Like, and if we actually talked about that yeah. in depth, like that's your, that's your opener. That's yeah, why we okay. always save it for you the know. podcast. So I, I think. You should maybe not this one, but the future one. But it, what I was saying with that person shooting vertical, yeah, like 
they would be able to pick apart after they've shot that and they're mm -hmm. going back and forth and you can tell it was like in the room it was shot on a phone it was vertical you're kind of yeah. like leaning in like wait what is what are they talking mm -hmm. about that's like what's going to make me then if i see that and there has to be a getting value in there like i give the either you or i give the guest that valuable little tidbit that they were kind of looking for mm -hmm. but they know there's a podcast that has way more mm -hmm. then i'm going to go to that podcast you gotta hire someone to stand right there mm. <laughs> it's the only solution <laughs> Yeah, we'll figure. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll, fi we'll figure it out. I don't know we'll if we will, but we'll try. To. I know. Listen, chances are, I know there's somebody watching. Yeah, or somebody watching. Who yeah, that's what I think you put out. Hey, if you guys yeah. are fans of Graham Stephan, he's hiring. <laughs> um, you have to be super good because he's really picky, but uh, he is hiring, and uh, Jack will and um, Alex will go through the applications. Where can they send you applications? Uh, Alex Nava at. Go ahead. You know what? Okay. Just, you know, Info. I'll go through a few. Not saying we're going to hire. No, but no. Okay. Here's, here's the key to the hiring video because you're hiring a producer. Yeah. We did this uh, and we were blown away by the results. We said, there's no applications. Don't send your resume. We don't want a list of things you've done. Make a, You have 60 seconds to tell us why we should hire you. Tell us about you. Oh, and a video in a video format. Ooh, oh, I like that. All right, guys. All right, guys. In 60 so, seconds, why should we hire you? Well, so we got to have a title that people can do. No, they would just be emailing it. Emailing? Yeah. yeah. Email, oh, literally email. email. Yeah. And here's the test. Part of it is like, make that subject no. line the best title for your 60 second resume. That's yeah, the test. Easy. Literally, See, that's I the liked title. What we did when we hired Alex was we had people just title their video Graham Stephan interview. And then we got to watch them all. And everyone else got to watch what people were saying. You could do that too. YouTube, but then other people preyed on yeah, our people did. that know. tried to get the job. That, yeah. they, which is smart. Yeah, 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 it is really smart. Sad. But also, I, not everybody is comfortable like even putting their stuff online. Uh, like yeah, a few people interviews. wanted to leave it unlisted. Yeah, so all right, all right, I would just fair. say, take it privately. And I mean, we were blown away by like, it was, it was clear. It was like the 20 front runners come to the front and you're like, wow. All right. Okay. So info at alexnava.com. No, Alexander Nova. Oh, yep. info at, Ale we're going to put it up on the screen. Listen here. up, everybody. Yeah. Graham, right. Stefan, right. and team is hiring. If you want to submit a video, uh, an application, they're not taking applications. They don't care about your resumes today. They want a 60 second video. Uh, shoot, uh, my, my hint is shoot it vertically too, because we're this is a social media business. Um, and then the subject of that email, write the catchiest title, why they should click on that, because they're not going to even click on all of them. Well, thanks well, for coming on, Zach. Really this has been it. a pleasure and an honor to have you on. Yeah, seriously. It's this crazy. I was so watching fun, you yeah. on Vine yeah. when I was, I don't even know, middle school maybe, yeah. which is insane now that, that I'm actually sitting really across old. from you. No, 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 no. But it's just, it's an honor. Thank you so much for yeah, coming on. Yeah, of course. On. And uh, if you guys haven't picked up your bankroll coffee yet, go do so in the description. What did you think of it? Be, but, be honest. Wait, I, was it, it, that was your beans? Yes. Oh, really good. Yeah. That I think was did the- you, Was there a creamer in here? It's really sweet. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, I did, it. so I put, uh, what is it? Cap, uh, Captain, not Captain Crunch. I usually cinnamon go- toast Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, you know yeah, what? I can taste the a cinnamon. Holiday, it's a I like holiday, that. it's a holiday flavor. Oh, cool. Well, go so. pick up a, go pick up a, is it a, is it come grounded or is it all- Both. Both. Okay, whole beans. Yeah. yeah. Pick up whole beans, get a grinder, nice. whole beans. Wow, that's good. Well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, did you get your free stock down below in the description when you sign up for public? It's worth all the way up to a thousand dollars. What's public? When you use the code Graham, their stock trading brokerage slash social media profile pro platform where you can get free <laughs> stock. All right, that's what it is. Oh, okay. Can I follow yes. like yes. and see public trades? Yes. yes. Oh, that's a yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Cool. That's the advantage of that's the public advantage nice. is that you could uh, see your profile, see exactly what I'm buying. So, thanks, Zach. Nice. All right, all right thanks, guys. <laughs> Great. Thank you, man.